The following episode of the Cellcast podcast is, uh, involves us reviewing a movie that features nudity. Do not go watch this movie if you're a kid. All other viewer discretion is advised. But if you enjoy, if you enjoy watching and listening to Cellcast, continue on. The Cellcast is recorded in front of a live streaming audience. Welcome to another episode of the Cellcast. Joining me today is a man who's feeling a little sick to his stomach. Welcome, Jacob. That's why you shouldn't play with ninja stars? Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. Oh, the, the, the less time I eat that soup, the better. Hmm. Which is strange because you don't like soup. No, I don't. I, I don't know why I was convinced to be like. It's it'd be like they were con- very convincing, and it sounded really good. And so I was like, "Yeah, why not? I'll try something." It was even stranger that it had broccoli in it, and you ate it. Oh, you yeah, I know. It's were disgusting. you convinced that two negatives could make a positive? I think so. Two rights don't make a wrong, but three lefts do. That's true. Why? Thank you. Let me use our co-host, a man who, in the bumper, only brought up that there's a there's nudity in. Lesser question is the vise. Welcome, Drew. That's really the best joke you can come up with. No, I want to bring it up. Oh, Jiminy Cricket's on a pogo stick. Yeah, we're we're reviewing a movie that somebody forgot to tell me. <laughs> this dude had uh, had some stuff in it. I would have loved to have known about ahead of time, so I could have, you know, been prepared. <laughs> Except I'm just sitting there watching what is essentially a scene I wasn't expecting to see. Right. And then it got worse. Yeah. It's like, Jacob, I know you saw Oppenheimer. Yes. Why? You warned me about that. I you <laughs> forgot another thing to warn me about. My apologies. My apologies. Because there again, be like, I watched this movie and it's like, oh my gosh, beautiful animation great action shots the whole bit i oh, remember I all these other stuff in this film i just don't think about it you didn't remember her jutsu oh and and the other That's jutsu it. yes the other jutsu <laughs> we'll get to that in a second snakes why does it gotta be snakes <laughs> indeed i'm just i was sitting there watching and we'll get into the thing in a second yeah but i have to point out i'm watching I'm, we're seeing this woman for the first time yes. with these snakes tattooed all over her body. Right. And the first thing that comes to my mind is you have a lot of pain tolerance, lady. Because <laughs> that many needles haven't gone all over your entire body, mm-hmm. including the parts where the sun don't shine. Yowch. I... That's a life choice. Yes, agreed. And not one I approve of. No, oh my god. That's villain, so that's fine. Yeah, that's Let's true. Let's just go ahead and villains to be jump villains into Satan. the rest of this before yes. we get too crazy. <laughs> like, we don't get crazy anyway. Certified fresh and spoiler free. This was my first viewing of this film. <laughs> and Again, fun, my apologies. And, and fun fact, this film is out of print right now. Really? Yes, I looked it up. If you want to purchase this film on DVD or Blu-ray now, yeah, it's a hundred dollars. Wow. Okay. From what I saw, and it's not streaming in anywhere. anywhere. I pur- I purchased this on uh, Amazon a couple of years ago when it when it, came, when it finally came out on the Blu-ray version. When I say a hundred dollars. It may have been closer to forty-five or fifty. Yeah, I purchased this for like twenty bucks. Yeah, for the steelbook, but it's that rare now. Yeah, this is not a steelbook though. <laughs> Yeah, so I perused the Internet Archive and watched it that way. Ah, okay. Uh, For a 1993 anime, this is actually animated very well. Yes, fair. Uh, I was actually surprised to learn this actually has a series based on it, too. Mm -hmm. That came out in 2000, not because it was... Uh, ba- badly done but it's just because i felt the story could not be expanded from what we saw in this film not it's really. not a bad no movie. it's not it's animated beautifully the story is 
Okay. Studio Mudhouse. Oh, yeah. Studio Mudhouse is always good. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's just an okay film. Okay. Animated well. Stories. Uh, I got you. A lot of good action. Fair. I can understand what I saw when I was looking through the trivia about how it was received both here and in Japan. Fair. What are your thoughts? Okay. So I've watched this movie probably several times now. And you didn't remember that scene. I didn't remember the scene. <laughs> Again, my apologies, my friend. Oh, dude, I don't <laughs> care now. <laughs> so I just thought it was funny. It's like, oh, I've watched this movie five or six times. And you forgot the, <laughs> that scene? Were you, did, were you, did you happen to all five viewings that you were drawing something and was distracted from the screen at the same moment every time? <laughs> That's a coincidence. Maybe. Okay, so my history with this film is interesting. So I remember at a very young age watching this on television. I think it was on the Sci Fi Network. I it was think it was on Sci Fi. It was on Sci Fi. Now, granted, it was, it was edited. On it was sci -fi. edited Sci Fi version of this. So I saw it and it was like, oh my gosh, amazing animation. It's ninjas, which at that point was okay. It's cool. Yeah, it's it was ninjas. Late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. Probably when you saw it, ninjas were the cool thing. Exactly. So I, I watched it once, and then I went to, uh, I believe it was Compalooza in Houston, Texas, which is a comic convention. Huge, massive uh, convention. I've gone probably three times. Mm -hmm. So we're walking around the show floor, and they've got this massive booth for Sentai Filmworks. And they have all their films out, including Ninja Scroll. And I'm like, oh, I really want them. I didn't have the cash on me in time, and I didn't want to go and just – Oh, let me pull up my credit card and let me buy this film. No, I want to be a responsible adult. So, because that's fun. Oh, yeah, that's fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, paying bills and that kind of stuff. But so eventually, this puppy came out. Uh, I don't remember when, but it came out a couple of 1998. Is no, when the, the Blu ray came out. Oh, the Blu ray. The that Blu -ray. I don't know. Blu ray. I'll get that info and stuff later. But that came out. And uh, I bought it, and I was like, ooh, I remember this film. I really enjoyed it. And, uh, and then I watched it, and I'm like, oh, this is a lot different than I remember. It's still good. And then I watched it over and over again. And now some of my, probably my Christian brother and sisters are like, wait a minute, you watched this over and over again? It's like, yes, I did. So it happens. It happens, because one, I love art. I'm an art nerd. I love art. <laughs> And so when I see stuff that this movie displays, now granted, a lot of it I do not condone in any fashion or form. Right. But when it comes to create creativity, when it comes to artistic expression, I am all about it in some capacities. So I enjoy this movie for what it is. Uh, I probably watched it maybe like four or five times by this point. And again, my apologies for not warning my co-host <laughs> for the, the obscene graphic nature of this film. It's not really that obscene. It's just you're sitting there and you're going, hello. Hi. I was not expecting to see you two here. <laughs> exactly. So, but yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, like, I, I have a fond love for this film. Uh, in the, I think this is the fifth time watching it in the review section, in the, in the review spectrum of watching this film. Uh, I have, there, there's a lot of issues and a lot of plot conveniences and plot, plot contrivances to get from A to B in order to do stuff in this film. Uh, um, yeah. so yeah, we'll bring the that film up. Could have been two hours long and oh, it would have been fine, but yeah, because very, it's like what an hour and a half, hour and a half, it, an hour and a it kind of jumps. Yeah. It jumps and it's just, there's so much conveniences in the story. And it's, it's the worst. Film no, movie. no, but it, it's it's more but... plot convenience to like, oh, set up this really, really cool animation fight. And yeah, so I'll, I'll talk about another film I, I was watching when the movies we watched. And that's yeah. just, that's 80s to the cheese with plot convenience. But uh, I enjoy it. I still enjoy it. I love the animation. Uh, the character designs are so well done. It is so 90s and like character designs i thought it was from the 80s originally but well i mean this it, is 1993 yeah the 
anime it's art coming style, out of these. yeah uh, uh, from like 85 to 95 is like the same in yeah. terms of that it was it, it was pretty much as best as tv uh cell animation could get before they agreed to uh digital um uh, recordings mm -hmm. so yeah so, still was using some cell but anyway agreed uh, there again i still enjoy this movie i do see the flaws in the film and I'm gonna try not to apologize the entire time to my co-hosts for Dude, not telling you. You are fine. I already messed with you enough for this. Agreed. Agreed. You, you get one more, and it's some dislikes. I'll just tell you that right now. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Ready to jump into the actually reviewing this thing? Yes. Let's do in this before, before I ramble full, more. The full spoiler-filled section. Throw a ninja star in the head. Wah! The following is a spoiler-filled review for the film Ninja Scroll. Listener discretion is advised. Very advised. Very advised. Ninja Scroll was written and directed by Yoshiaki Kawajiri, who also directed Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust. Yes. And you can tell. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Getting into the cast. Kibagami Jubei, our hero, mm -hmm. was played by... And bear in mind, we are reviewing the English dub. Yes. That we normally do. And uh, this dub was created by Manga Entertainment out mm -hmm. of England. Yes. But I think, well, England is where the company was out of. Mm -hmm. This is definitely an American cast. I think it's mm -hmm. Ocean Group. Yeah, it's Could Ocean. Bang Zoom, I'm not sure. It's Ocean Group. It's Ocean Group. Okay. As far as I understand. Was not sure. But anyway, yeah. So, yeah. Kibagami Jubei was played by Den Ween. Sorry, Dean Ween. Dean Wayne. I'm sorry, man. I'm screwing your name up. And in Ghosts in the Shell... Yeah, he played Borma. You know the guy with cybernetic eyes. Yes, I've I've, I've got to say I love his performance as Jubei. The you entire know, wouldn't make the connection; those two were the same actor. No, 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 no. But like his his performance in this movie is so well done. Mm -hmm. Be like his 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 uh his punchline jokes oh, the yeah. entire time. It's like, oh man, this is good. <laughs> Kagero was played by Wendy Lee. Mm -hmm. who also played Faye Valentine in Cowboy Bebop. Oh. That makes it, that makes more sense now. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Dow Khan, you know, the old man. Yeah. Was played by Steve Ap Apostolina. Apostolina. And he played the Destructosphere in Saban's Masked Rider. The Destructor Sphere? The Destructosphere. <laughs> All I hear is Destructo Disc <laughs> from Dragon Ball Z. Well, that name was created when Saban was was actually in charge of Dragon Ball. So wait, what? No, you don't know this? No, I don't. What? Funimation, <laughs> when they were doing the original English dub, yeah. partnered with Saban to get all the funding because this was like the first thing Funimation ever did. And so some of the changes <sighs> are made. Some, some of the changes you can trace back to Saban's involvement. In fact, Ron Wasserman? Yeah actually wrote some of the music in the first season of Dragon Ball for the English version. I heard about that. I yeah. was like, what? He did not world? write Rock the Dragon. Oh, okay. Which is probably the most iconic song probably from our childhoods, right. but... He did not write that, but uh, he did write a couple, some things. Anyway, got mm, off slightly my, off topic Yeah, here. mind blown here. Okay, yeah. Saban was involved with everything in the 90s. Let's say that. More than you would think. You would think. Oh my gosh. Hmm. Tessai was played by Kevin Seymour. This was the big rock guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to say that. Good comments of that guy. Because I was looking through the names when I was making this cast mm -hmm. list and going, I don't know who any of you people are. Because <laughs> I don't remember anybody saying no. anyone's names except for Jubei, Kagiro, and Dakon, and Gemma. <laughs> That's the only names I remembered for this. So I had to look up who people were. Sorry. Tessai being played by Kevin Seymour. In the manga dub of Lupin the Third, Castle of Cagliostro. Lupin the Third. He played Inspector Zenigata. Really? Yeah. Okay. Mushizo. Don't ask me who he was. I just know I think I just know he's one of the main demons they fight. Or mm. the, what do they call him? The the not the devil syndicate. Um, the, the seven devils of uh hell or something like that they work for the dark shogunate that's yeah the dark shogunate that's that um mushizo was played by milton jamin 
And in Street Fighter II, the animated movie, he played a character named Seno. Oh my gosh. I love that movie. Love it. <laughs> Zakuro was played by Riva Spear. And in the video game Star Ocean Till the End of Time, she played Elena. What? I know you don't know what that is, but it was the uh, only thing I saw. It's like, oh, I know what that is. What? What? What is that? It's a video game that's oh. actually a uh, sci-fi RPG. Hmm. That spoiler alert! By the end of it, goes completely meta and reveals that it's all taking place inside a video game. Ah, good to know. It's actually the end of the franchise, hmm. even though they made games after it. So they all take place before that movie, that game. It's weird. I agree. Weird. Utsu Mujiro was played by Kirk Thornton, and he has been voicing Shadow the Hedgehog Ooh. since the video game Shadow the Hedgehog. Huh. That makes sense ever since our lovely co-host is a big fan of Shadow, our Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog, the, the, the blue blur. This will come back, by the way. Himuro Gemma was played by Richard Epcar. Mm -hmm. And in Street Fighter, the animated movie, he played E. Honda. Mm. You know, the giant um, sumo wrestler with his thousand face slap. You don't know what I'm talking about. No, I don't. Because you didn't play, actually play the game. You I just know the movie. I just know the movie, okay? The sumo wrestler. There had to have been a sumo wrestler yes, in it since they Yes, I, I remember. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Because I mean, I've seen the game. It was Hawaiian I'm... in the live action film, but it's a different character. It's a different actor. But be like, I had played the game a little bit when I was younger. I remember the shooting... one that took place in the levels that took place in the bathhouse. Yes, that's the guy. I remember him. And he has. His I remember special playing attack, him. His special attack was a thousand face, a, a thousand uh, face slaps or whatever. Yeah, it was just like. Yeah, I never could do pull it off. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts connections. Starting with the English dub. Okay, so I'm just curious. I just said starting with the English dub. Oh crap! You're you're not giving me a chance to figure out no, how many. Okay, hang on. Okay, Eng English dub. How many? Uh, this was 1990. Oh, it's the movie was 98. So the English dub was 1998. Yeah, 98. So Kingdom Hearts would have came out what year? 2002 was when the first game came out. Oh, okay. So and one of these people was in the first game no he's not in the first game he gets hmm. replaced later on sorry oh okay this is the second guy to voice these characters i would say probably like a good solid like maybe eight in just english dub english dub okay i'm only asking for english dub first oh okay so maybe five three and that includes the smash brothers oh okay i was Okay. Good. Richard, Richard Epcar, voice of Gemma in this. Mm -hmm. or Gemma. I don't know how you say his name. Gemma. He is the second voice actor to play for uh, Ansem Seeker of Darkness and Terra Zea Norton, Kingdom Hearts. Whom I know very little about. Do you remember when we were doing that live stream of Kingdom Hearts and there was the guy in the, sh in the, uh, near, near the beginning in Destiny Islands that was covered in a brown robe and you couldn't see his face? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember you mentioning that that's name. Not the actor playing him at the time, because mm -hmm. that's Billy Zane in the get in the first game. Great actor, by the way. Oh yeah, but Richard Epcar replaces him later on. Oh, uh, okay. Kirk Thornton, who was Mujiro in this, along with playing Shadow the Hedgehog in Smash Brothers, mm -hmm. he was also Sykes and Isa in Kingdom Hearts, mm. and Wendy Lee, the voice of Ka Kagero. Kagero. She played the uh, character Lynn from uh, one of the Fire Emblem games in Smash Brothers. Okay. Take a guess on the Japanese cast. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm fairly certain it's probably a lot. Yes. I would probably go with ten. Five. Wow, I was off. Which means your initial guess of eight. I was was, I was spot on. Nice. Okay. So you, you get you get a half point. Nice. Kochi Yamadera, who was the Japanese voice for Jubei Kibagami. He voiced Genie, Beast, and in Smash Brothers, uh, the Pokemon Mew and Marshadow. Okay. But the 
biggest thing he did in Kingdom Hearts, believe it or not, was Donald Duck. What? This is the guy who voices Donald Duck in the Japanese mm. version. Oh, okay. Of Kingdom Hearts. The main character of this anime. Wow. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not a connection you expect to make. No, I, I, I would think it's like, okay, I want to see hear this guy's actual performance as Donald Duck. That'd be interesting. After the uh, after the show, the show I will show you. Of course, because I had to look this up too. <laughs> Norio Wakamoto, who was Mujiro in this, is in uh, Kingdom Hearts, plays Zemnis, and in Smash Brothers, Metal Face. Hmm. Shuchiro Moriyama, who was the Chamberlain in this, voices Flotsam and Jetsam in Kingdom Hearts. Kaoru Wada, who was the composer for this film. Hmm would go on to be the orchestrator for Kingdom Hearts 3 and compose the boss fight music for Rathalos from Monster Hunter in Smash Brothers. Huh. And uh, Takeshi Aono, who I keep wanting to call Takeshi Ano for some reason. Takeshi Ano. I think I'm combining like you probably the guy are. from uh, the, the, the name of the he- main hero from uh, Common Rider mm. with... Uh, Hideki Ano is the guy I keep oh, okay. connecting him with. Sorry. But he played Dao Khan in uh, this movie, in the Japanese version. Hmm. And he would go and voice Roy Campbell in Smash Brothers. Really? Do you know who Roy Campbell no is? No clue. Do you know about uh, Metal Gear Solid? Yes. Okay. Metal Gear Solid has a number of side characters that talk to Solid Snake on his little codec from time to time throughout the game. Okay. In the Smash Brothers level, both in Smash Brothers Brawl, where this initiated, and in Smash Brothers Ultimate, if you are playing, if, if a character is playing Snake and does a taunt, you have a chance to bring up an actual codec message among the characters that will talk about whoever Snake is fighting. Okay. Roy Campbell is one of these. Hmm. Anyway, that's all I've got for ca- the cast and crew such. Okay. What do we got in info and stuff? All right, so info and stuff. Uh, it has an IMDb of 7.8 7. out of 10. Uh, watch you can't watch it anywhere legally <laughs> currently unless it's debatable how legal internet archive is yeah like well he's got a point there you know, unless you have one of these bad boys a dvd maybe even a vhs of this thing be like this is probably the only way you can watch it now you can go watch the series but it's not the same yeah way. it's on it's on sentai film works yeah it's on sentai film works sentai High dive film. Is a service. Ah, okay. All right. Production. This was fun. CV, uh, JVC. Which would then become Pioneer, which then become Genion, which is owned by Universal. Okay. Good to know. Didn't know that. Did you follow any of what I just said? I did, actually. (laughs) Okay. Got JVC. Mm -hmm. Their animation department got bought by Pioneer. Mm Mm-hmm. Pioneers sold it then to Jenny uh, to Jenny on a special thing, and then that got bought by Universal. Sold. Yeah, I tracked it. Which is weird how what's now Crunchyroll doesn't have it since they have every other uh, every other Jenny on release. That is strange. But whatever. Uh, Toho, Movica. I said that right. Movica, probably. M O V I C. Movic. Movic. Okay. Movic. I like to move it. Move it. <laughs> uh, and for be like, and to round out the cream and lazy stunts, Madhouse Productions are animated mouse booth products. Yes. yes. Whatever. Anything that studio does is gold animation wise. It's going to be good. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, distribution was by. Wow, I just went blank. How do I say this word? <laughs> uh, d- 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 Sentai? No. Uh, who? T O K Y O. T O K Y O. Yeah. Tokyo? Tokyo. Thank you. Tokyo? <laughs> yeah, Tokyo. Like, yeah. Is we're, this TMS? Tokyo Movie Studios? No, the actual, the actual companies. Yeah, but it's, okay, never mind. Yeah. Read these orders. You got to love them, right? Release date, uh, 
It was also released by here in the States was oh, took in the, okay, yeah, Ma Manga Entertainment in 1998, right? Yeah. 98, and then Sendai Filmworks picked it up later. Because most of manga entertainment is mm -hmm. no longer exists. That is true. That is true. Uh, release date was June in Japan in June 3rd, 1996. It will be later part over in the States in 1988. Um, box office. It actually had a box office. Uh, worldwide gross was 1,000, uh, 1,000, $1,733. That's it. <laughs> No budget, no nothing. Uh, home release. The film was licensed to Manga Entertainment in Australia and North America until 2012, while the UK kept the license and released the movie in a Blu-ray stillbook form in October 2012. The film was has since been re-released in North America by Sentai Filmworks, who re-released the film on DVD and Blu-ray in November 2012. So I bought the film probably around 2013. Mm -hmm. Okay, the it was one of the first Japanese movies released in the United Kingdom in 1995. The BBFC, I'm not sure what that stands for, are film critics, I assume. BBC film critics, I could be wrong. Uh, cut the UK version of approximately 55 seconds to remove uh, some very bad stuff I'm not going to mention here on our family friendly show. Uh, and the images, stuff I should have been warned about, yeah, exactly, exactly, put, put it that way, yeah, exactly. And uh, the UK in the 90s, let's just say this, uh, and images of throwing stars. Because you couldn't say ninja in the 1990s. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because the Ninja Nin Turtles. They couldn't be. They got to be Hero Turtles. They had to be Teenage Mutant Ninja. Uh, yeah, Teenage Mutant Hero, Hero Turtles, Turtles. Because ninjas were too violent. Yeah, exactly. I get where you're coming from, but this is still stupid. Agreed, but it's the 90s for you. All right. Uh, these cuts were waived in the 2004 10th anniversary. Uh, Ninja Scroll was released in Australia by Manga UK in 1995, uncut with a MA 14 plus uh, classifications in 1997. After it was screened on SBS, former Attorney General Philip Ru uh, Philip Rud Ruddeck 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 Yeah, Ruddeck. We'll go with that. Ruddeck. Controversially applied, the film um, appealed the movie's original classification and was successful to have the classification upgraded to R18 plus with no cuts. In June of 1998, it was broadcast twice on midnight on the new Teletoon station in Canada, along with episodes of Macross plus OVA series. G kids, because <laughs> G kids does not necessarily mean oh, it's I know, for kids. I know that. I know that. I know that. I was just Otherwise, like, why would they have released Safe Galleon? That's true. Just, I'm just saying. Oh, I know. I know. I'm just. I'm. I'm, I'm just joshing you about just saying that because you know, like it's just like G kids releases everything. Everything. They're the artistic anime releaser. Agreed. They're good at it. Uh, G Kids later announced it would be distributed to the film in North America with a theatrical release on scheduled for April April of 2018. That would have been an interesting to go see a film like that in theaters. You just don't tell your mother where you're going. Again, if you're underage, do not go watch this film. I highly strongly recommend it. Mm. Do not watch this film. If you're underage. If you're underage. Do not go watch this film, period. Now, I'm probably driving some kids to be like, oh, he said go watch. Don't go watch the film. I'm going to go watch it. Please don't do that. Be like from the SoCast. Be like, we are not condoning young people to go watch this film at all. Just covering our bases here. 
Also, if you have some personal convictions about seeing such things, exactly, don't, don't do it. Yeah, don't do, do not it. Allow, do not let us be the reason you sin. Exactly. We did not give you permission to sin. Yeah. No. 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 Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, let's see. Where was I until I went on that tirade? Uh, in two in two thousand, when Manga and Madman Entertainment released Ninja Scroll on DVD, Madman mistakenly Ma- no Madman. Oh. Madman Entertainment. Madman uh oh, that's right. Okay, I mistakenly used the UK cut of the film instead of the used uncut Australian version. It was uh recalled in 2004 when Manga Entertainment released the 10th anniversary special edition of Ninja Scroll in the western in western countries, both in Australia and the UK received Ninja Scroll uncut and remastered from a pal vhs uh source oi Mm. that does not sound like a good transfer um in canada Canada. the the film was given a 18a rating while it was released unrated in the united states go figure the film was released on blu-ray in japan on may 23rd 2012 sequels in a Japanese animated television series named Ninja Scroll, the series, and in Japan in, 2000, in 2003 and ran for 13 episodes. The series is a standalone sequel to the film. However, many references suggest that it was indeed a continuation in the series. Jue gets caught in the middle of a battle with uh, between the... Comet clan, I'm probably going to butcher this, and another clan. Uh, so we had more hijinks ensues with uh, Jube. Uh, let me think. Uh, so yeah, there there was um, a series that came out. I don't know if it actually got a English dub. Uh, this was uh, 2002, I think, when the series came out. 2003. Okay, that was still when uh, Sentai was. They either were still technically ADV, yeah. or they were had just transitioned and they still had some money to produce dubs. Okay, so they weren't doing a whole lot of straight sub stuff. So it may have one. I didn't look at this. Right, up. right. So I will do so while you are continuing. Yes. So apparently there was a sequel. They got canceled. So in August of 2018, Madhouse. Madhouse Animation uh, announced that an official sequel was in the works with I am terrible pronouncing names uh, the director and writer of the of this of this film well in your defense it's a tough name it is a very tough name uh, and you would ask me that when I was on another page no you're good uh, uh, I'm gonna um, so I can't Hang on. No, you're good. Where is the thing? <laughs> Where is the thing? Yoshiaki Kawajiri. Yeah, Kawajiri. 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 Thank you. Because I was scared to death to say that word. I was like, I'm going to butcher this and say it the wrong way. Kawajiri. Which that makes it Kawajiri. Yes. Uh, ret- would return as writer and director. In 2012, the studio released a teaser trailer for a three episode short anima- animation titled Ninja Scroll Burst intended to attract investors on the project on t- in February 2014 Madhouse uh co-host uh, Madhouse CEO Okadaya probably saying that wrong my apologies Okadaya uh confirmed that the director had finished the script uh, tinley called Ninja Scroll Kokoko. Well, I mean, the literal name for the show in mm. Japanese is Jubei's Wind Ninja Chronicles Dragonstone Story. True, because the actual name of the movie in Japan mm. translates to uh, Jubei's Ninja Chronicles. Yes. All right, and the production would move ahead as soon as the financing has been. Uh, had been required. He also divulged the the the, the 
studio was experiencing difficulties trying investors due to the fact that the original film wasn't was not a big hit in Japan. And as of 2019, the project remains in limbo. Uh, let's see in North America. Oh, this one was fun. <laughs> All right. So in North America, Ninja Resurrection, the original the original movie animation was marketed as a sequel to Ninja Scroll. But it was actually based on an unrelated story created by a different animation studio. It was only similar as the lead character was given the name Juba, Juby, which I've seen. I mean, I think it's all in the nostalgia critic. Actually, no, it wasn't that. Ninja S Resurrection or Ninja Assassin? Uh, Ninja Resurrection. Okay, never mind. Yeah. I was just sitting there going, did you steal one of my trivia? <laughs> no. Like, no, you didn't. No, I didn't. You did. Fair enough. Yeah. There again, we do not cross pollinate with trying to figure out what we're what we're gonna do or we just you know do sure. it. we do it independently like this is nine tenths of the fun uh, agreed uh, agreed uh, let me think uh so yeah the these two films are not connected because I remember I can't remember, oh crap what's his name he's a, he's a he's a uh anime reviewer on YouTube I am forgetting that narrows it down oh, I know he's very he's fairly large and I think he moved to France recently but you have not helped me. Any. No, I haven't. But, you know, moving forward. All right. So, yes, there is no connection between Ninja Scroll and Ninja Resurrection. Because if you've seen Ninja Resurrection, it's a piece of crap. <laughs> nah, tell us how you really think, Jacob. <laughs> it's not a good film. I've, I've seen most. No, I can't say because I've never seen the film. I've seen most of like clips and people reviewing the film, but I don't have a personal review of the film myself. So I can't officially say it's a piece of crap. I have heard people say it's a piece of crap. Okay. Okay. So apparently there was a live action adaptation in the works. Yeah. Like, we really want to adapt this movie. <laughs> uh, apparently, we were going to get a live action adaptation in air quotes for our audio listeners. In October of 2018, 2018, 2008, uh, it was reported that Warner Brothers had acquired the rights to develop a live action adaptation of Ninja Scroll by Leonardo DiCaprio's production company. That would have been an interesting that choice. That would. Leonardo DiCaprio would be Jubei. That would be interesting. He couldn't play the comedic timing whatsoever. But Leonardo DiCaprio is a good actor. Just not comedy. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, that's my best hat. I don't see DiCaprio, you know, <laughs> I don't see him doing that. But uh, Madhouse and the Japanese producer, uh, Jungo... Mendru, again, I'm going to butcher these names to death. I apologize. Uh, Wolves from Bob the Project, screenwriter Alex Truss, uh, Tush, who co wrote the 1998 film Watchmen, uh, the Zack Snyder film, was hired on as a screenwriter in 2008, 2009. It was reported that DiCaprio would act as producer and was considered. <laughs> And was considered was considered casting the Japanese boy brand AMAP ASMP AP as the lead roles. What in the sand hill is this? That sounds weird. I don't know who this boy band is, but a boy band playing this kind of movie? Really? Well, I mean DiCaprio, I, I think you Spend a little too much time in that cold water on Titanic. What is wrong with you? Well, I mean, anime is most of the time voiced by uh, idol groups. Oh, I and agree. Boy, I'm sure this boy band may have voiced a few characters. Uh, probably. Probably. But nuance. Let's move forward. Um, I just found that weird. I was like, okay, that's odd. But there again, I have the information that available at this moment. Yes. And your Kingdom Hearts key is wiggling. Yes, I know. Yeah, weird. The keychain. Keychain. Moving on. In 2015, Dracula Untold, which I have told was not a good film. Uh, director Gary Shu uh, revealed that he once 
had been attached to the film, uh, re releasing a proof, a concept trailer he had provided with motion capture by 8711 and anima anim animated, animated by the third floor productions. In 2018, the production remains in development hell. That's all I have for info and stuff. A lot of stuff I did not realize about this movie. And now, and now you know the rest of the story. Getting into the summary, however, in Edo period Japan, the Yamashiro clan mines gold in secret and sends a shipment to the Toyotami Shogun of the Dark as payment for his protection. Mm -hmm. The Shogun of the Dark in intends to use the gold to buy advanced Spanish weaponry and overthrow the current government, the Tokugawa Shogunate. The ship runs aground onto Mochizuki territory mm -hmm. in a storm, and the eight devils of Kimon, a ninja team with uh, supernatural powers in the employ of the Yamashiro, kill the people of the nearby Shimoto village to keep the gold shipment a secret. While investigating the deaths, the Mochizuki Koga ninja team is massacred by the devils. The sole survivor, the Kunoichi Kagero, is captured by a devil, Tessai, who attempts to know her biblically. She is rescued by Kibagami Chubei, a mercenary ex Yamashiro ninja who fights and eventually kills Tessai. Daokan, a Tokugawa spy, blackmails Jubei into helping him kill the remaining devils. To ensure his compliance, Dakon stabs Jubei with a poison shuriken hmm. and promises to give him an antidote once the mission is complete. Jubei learns from Daokan that the leader of the devils is Himuru Gemma, the former Yamashiro ninja leader who has ordered the te his team's members to kill each other to cover up the location of the gold mine five years earlier. Jubei, who had been forced to kill his comrades to survive, decapitated Gemma in revenge. Gemma survived due to his immortality. Hmm. Ain't that convenient. Yeah. Jubei is attacked by another devil, Benisato, but he is saved by Kagero before she can be questioned. Benisato is killed from afar by Yuri Maru, Gemma's right-hand man, for failing her mission. Kagero agrees to work alongside Jubei and Dakon, who informs Jubei that her body is infused with such deadly toxins that anyone who kisses or sleeps with her dies, which is why Jubei could kill Tessai. Or even touch her skin. The trio arrive in Shimoda, where they discover that the villagers died due to their water supply being poisoned, making it appear they were killed by a plague. Jubei and Kagero fend off attacks from three of the devils, Mushizo, Zakuro, and Utsumujuro. Jubei succeeds in killing Mushizo and Utsu after finding the beat ship. Kagero de deduces that the gold has been taken to Kamashima Harbor, Harbor which is to be transported to the Shogun of the Dark in another ship. Jubei, Kagero, and Daokan arrive at Kashima, which has been evacuated due to the townspeople's fear of the plague. While Jubei battles another devil, Shijima, uh, Kagero sends a message to Sakaki Hiobu, the Mochizuki Chamberlain, to bring his army to the harbor. She also learns from Daokan that Jubei's poisoning will only be cured if he gets to know her biblically with her. Uh, gets to know her biblically. The poisons in her body will counteract this. Somehow. Kagero is captured by Shijima, and Jubei kills him, rescuing her once more. Kagero asks Jubei to get to know her with, <laughs> to cure himself. He decides against it, and upon arrival by, of the Shogun of the Dark Envoy, Envoy in a ship, he leaves to prevent the gold reaching its destination. Kagero arrives to meet Sakaki, but he stabs her, revealing himself to be Gemma in disguise, as he has murdered the real one days before. And apparently he's a shapeshifter. Enraged, Jubei fights through waves of ninjas, but is nearly killed by Yurimaru, a gunpowder-rigged rat left as a trap by Zakuro for Yumimaru for rejecting her advances. Kills him, allowing Jubei to escape. He finds Kagero mortally wounded. She admits her, her love for him, and they kiss, curing Jubei's poisoning. Before dying, Kagero gives Jubei her headband. Jubei and Daokan board the departing ship, on board, Gemma reveals his true intentions to use the gold to raise a ninja army to terrorize Japan rather than serve as an ally to the Toyotami, to a masked samurai who serves as a Shogun of the Dark's envoy and proceeds to kill him. During an altercation with Zakuro, Jubei and Daokan set the ship ablaze as Jubei and Gemma engage in a brutal fight. The gold becomes molten and engulfs Gemma, who sinks to the bottom of the sea. 
Afterwards, Daokon thanks Jubei and expresses admiration for his and Kagaro's humility, humanity. Jubei resumes his vagabond lifestyle with Kagaro's headband tied around his sword hilt. Getting into the trivia for this film, as you said earlier, mm -hmm. this film was not as successful or well-received in Japan as it was in the United States. The concept of Ninja Scroll arose from the director's fascination with ninjas and the idea of them always trying to trick each other. This film is a tribute to the works of Japanese author Futaro Yamada, who mm -hmm. throughout the 60s wrote many historical novels about ninjas. Director James McTeague cited this film as one of the influences behind the film Ninja Assassin in 2009. Mm, makes sense. Kagero wears the exact same purple headdress costume that Meiko Kaji wore in the film Lady Snowblood from 1973. Okay. This aired on the Sci-Fi Channel as part of their Anna Monday block in 2008 with a TV-14 rating. That makes sense. This version cut or digitally obscured knowing scenes and <laughs> removed a few instances of bad language i'm sorry this is a joke now however yes. all the violence was left intact intact the same edited version was later shown on the horror-based chiller channel ah that makes sense the british board of film classification cut 52 seconds of the film with high violence and getting to know one another now manga entertainment re-released the film on blu-ray uncut past 18 one of this is one of y Yoshiaki Kawajiri's proudest works, along with Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust in 2000 and Wicked City in 1987. Emmy Shinohara and Wendy Lee, who voiced the Japanese and English versions of uh, Kogeru in this film, uh, also share the role of uh, share the same role in Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust. Hmm. They both happen to voice each other in e in each movie. Okay. Ninja Scroll, in, in Ninja Scroll, each frame was drawn and completed by hand. No copies, reused, or reprinted duplicates were used to complete the entire film. Wow, that's impressive. Now, for those of you who don't understand what we're saying there, yes, of course, it's 1993. There was no digital production at, at this time. Mm -hmm. What we're saying is they didn't copy scenes. There's never a point with reused animation throughout the entire film. Yeah, that's what is impressive. Yes, completely. Even Disney couldn't get away with that at this time. No, they were using fax or not um, Xerox. Xerox. They were, they were using, using Xerox. the Xerox method. It's, yeah, and copying all their old films. Mm -hmm. But a lot. <laughs> yes, a lot. Uh, what's your first like for this film, Jacob? My first like for this film is the animation itself. It is so brilliant done because there again madhouse is involved with it and i'm sorry do you recall like other projects like madhouse has done that are just so iconic would first vampire hunter d bloodlust mm -hmm. uh i did enjoy beck mongolian chop squad that was a series death note yeah uh trigun tri yeah they did trigun let's see one punch man exactly they did blade beyblade i'm sure they worked on it yeah they worked on it let's see card capper sakura card captor sakura oh, sakura lensman perfect blue mm -hmm. they were one of the studios on batman gotham knight okay that makes sense trigun badlands rumble mm-hmm this is the only things that are jumping out at me. They they usually are a good studio. They I are. I don't always enjoy their uh I don't always enjoy their stories. I'll put it that way. Fair. Fair, fair. Oh, they directed they, they worked on Supernatural the anime series. Supernatural the animated series? Anime series. Anime. There's an anime series from 2011. I've got to discover this. This is interesting. I, it, it looks like it's an OVA. Oh, okay. That makes sense. It call, it's called that because that's just how they would have released it over here. But oh, okay. essentially, it's like two or three episodes, probably. Okay. So going back to my number one, the animation is done very well. My uh, studio, Met, um, Madhouse. Madhouse Studios, uh, done incredible. I'm like, oh, my gosh. We like The the fact that we, like, you can pick, we were bold on to pick this thing up. And watch it 
be like there again, like Drew said in his his uh trivia that this film be like it doesn't use copies, it's straight animation, animation, there's no duplication or nothing. It is just straight up artistic masterpiece animation work at its finest in an anime in a anime movie. For some reason, I want to say an, uh, anime, but it's an anime. You'd be very careful how you say that. Yes, I know, because some people will lose their lose their stool over it. <laughs> um, continue. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So, yes, the animation of this movie is so well done. Be like from just like character designs and the whole bit. It's just, it is a wonderful animation masterpiece to behold. Uh, they're going to be of right age watching it. Um, and if you are convicted by those things, do not watch it because we do not condone people falling into sin yes. because we recommended something. We do not recommend it if you have a sin problem with this. So don't watch it if you have that problem. We're going to start sounding like a broken record if we're not careful. But. Exactly. So let's try not to. Yes. So, um, yes, animation, brilliant. I love the animation in this movie. So well done. What's your number one? I'm gonna have to jump on that too because the animation is good in this. The fact that it's all cell animation, mm -hmm. no re no copies. Yeah. Even where I have like issues with some of the choices in the film, uh, it's actually done very well. There's not a point in here where it's badly drawn. Exactly. Uh, yeah, the animation. Yeah. What's, my, your, what's your second like? Sorry. My second like, Jubei. <laughs> Jubei, as a character, is just freaking awesome. He is this vagabond of a ninja. He To me, he seems more like a ronin, who's a... Technically, he's... Well, he'd actually have to be a samurai first before he could be a ronin. That is and true. He does not fight like a samurai. That is true. Okay. Or he doesn't look like he's ever been a samurai. I'll okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. He's 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 a wandering vagabond. The samurai is basically like a Japanese lord. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. It just kind of remain reminded me of that. The guy wandering yeah. around with no master. But uh no, he's his own dude. He 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 apparently he takes, you know, jobs for a very low amount. And does them very well. And apparently people know him very well. And it's like, oh, you're Jubei. And uh, his his wit, his quippy little comebacks, his uh, his point where his hack, I'm not going to describe the scene because I'm not going to, but there's a point where Jubei, his, his, his big hat, what do you call those hats? You know that? Okay, never mind. No, I don't. <laughs> okay, well, never mind. It's like, it's just the Japanese hat. Yeah, big it's a straw hat. Big straw hat gets split down the middle, and it was like, oh, my favorite hat. And it was like, just like the the little funny lines he's given. Like he's a serious character, but he's funny about it, and which I, I find I find that very uh, compelling as a character. Yes, he is a very serious character. He is a deadly assassin. He is a deadly ninja with all like everything he does, but he has a sense of humor. And I love that. I love that they kind of that that's weed into his character, and it's so well done. Apparently, that type of hat is called an amigasa. Amigasa. Okay. So yeah, his amigasa gets split, and he's like, "Oh, my hat!" With this kind of this like sense of I lost my best hat. But at the same time, kind of this humorous undertone with the the, the English voice actor who. I'm not going to ask you to pull his name up, but uh, his his performance as Jubei is amazing because they're going to be like, I, I don't understand Japanese. And sometimes with the you mean Koichi Yamadera. Yes. The original voice actor. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Just I don't know how his performance was, uh, but I'm pretty sure it was probably around the same thing with this kind of quirky cheek kind of thing what he would like he's standing in a corner be like hey I'm, I'm looking for and like hey you know where this is at with this really terrible scene going on and he's just sitting there it's just like oh that's brilliant <laughs> but um 
but yeah, just the voice actor, voice actors, and the character of Jube actually made me laugh in this very serious 90s action movie. So yeah, Jube. My second like for this actually is going to be the action of okay. the film. I know that kind of falls in with the animation, but I, I, I thought it was very well choreographed mm -hmm. throughout the film. Uh, to get, get the pump. I, I have some issues with whether not gold melts that fast. It doesn't. I looked but, at it. It doesn't. But or or just turns into like gold water basically in yeah. its molten form. I don't think I'll, it works like that. I'll, I'll get into that in my dislikes. But uh, but the rest of the rest of the action throughout this, I thought was was done very well. And the fact that this movie does not um, hold its punches at all. It every every action feels like a hit. If that makes sense. Yes, I agree. Um, so yeah, the the action in this film. Okay, is so, my second like. Okay, so I'm gonna bounce off yours. And yeah, go with the, the 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 my third is the um, sword fights and uh, action coordination with how I like how it's animated how be like it it there again this is all like very artistic expression how mm -hmm. things work but how be like movement kinetic kinetic energy everything throughout this entire all the action scenes are incredibly well choreographed and just like just brilliant brilliantly well done and i enjoy that about this film is the court the uh choreography of the fight scenes and everything that's going on in this movie it's like wow like someone actually took the time to choreograph everything in this movie mm -hmm. because this movie is based around action and fight scenes and sword fights and lots and lots of blood <laughs> So yeah, core, the choreography of the film is done very well. That is my number three. My third like is actually going to be the writing of the English dub. Yes, because this is a 1998 Americanization. Yes, localization. This is not a time period in which localization is generally considered good mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean there's stuff that's being done around this time that even we've watched and enjoyed mm -hmm. but um this is like granted it's it i don't think this is like a top of the line translation mm -hmm. but um yeah, the fact that it, the, the the little jokes here and there actually mm -hmm. carry yes they uh, do they actually are still funny without really um without really messing with the original version too much. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's the thing about comedy between cultures is what is funny in Japan may not necessarily be funny. Here exactly. Because of the puns, they don't mm -hmm. translate well mm -hmm. between languages and such. And it works here. And I appreciate that it, uh, the comedy actually does work here. Yes. So, yeah. The writing of the, of the, of the English dub in this nice. is my third like. What is your first dislike? Contrived plot conveniences. Oh my word. It's like, okay, so you have moment like again, brilliant choreograph, story, mm -hmm. animation, the whole enchilada. Everything is so freaking convenient for every like all of our characters. Be like, oh, they have to go do this. Oh, here's this easy so it's straightforward. I mean, like. It, the uh, I, I wish they would have thought more into like actual plot of this movie because there again be like this plot is about a quarter thick because all this movie does is literally set up for action scene action scene action scene and takes some character development here and there splices that in let's do everything 90s in this film and make the entire story convenient for our characters to get through. So easy. Like, there's nothing hard. There's nothing to be like, obviously, they have to fight, but everything is so contrivously, the plot convenience is so uncanny. Because our, our characters literally have to do nothing, and the, the plot will come to them. Or, oh, oh, okay. So, Jubei got stabbed. He's now going to die. Oh, 
oh, this, this, X, Y, Z. You're like, oh, that's so easy. But like, granted, the storytelling is very well done, but the plot convenience is so ag aggravating beyond belief. It drove me nuts this, this time watching it because I watched it for the first four times and it was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Kind of paying attention to it a little bit, making it in mind. It's like, oh, wow, this is really good. And then watching it for this review, you know, putting my reviewer glasses on, if I was wearing glasses, uh, my reviewer contacts, um, you start seeing that. It's just like, that is a little too convenient. Like all the time throughout this entire film, it is way too convenient for everything to happen the way it does. And uh, so, yeah, the the plot is way too convenient for everything. And uh, I don't know if you have any comebacks for that, but it's, that is my first. It's just the, the plot is too convenient for everything. There, there's no real high stakes and be like, there's no like mounting tension for our characters because it just comes with them. I don't have a comeback. Okay, then. Want to know why? Why? Because my first dislike for this film mm -hmm. is that despite the action, mm -hmm. the ninja fighting and all yes. this other stuff, this story is just so dull. It is dull. It's a very dull story. I got bored with this film. Oh, wow. I was on my phone for a good portion of this <laughs> film. Oh, I, I feel bad. Because it's like I should be paying attention. Yes, for, to, for this for because I got to review this for the podcast, mm -hmm. and some of this animation is done very well. Uh -huh. But there's just, I would agree. I don't care. I literally don't care about what happens in this film. <laughs> and that's my first dislike. Is I don't care about anybody. Jubei at least is an, is a likable character, right? I agree, but he's. Never gets a chance to really be anything but what he has to be to survive. Exactly. I mean, like, yeah, we, we understand. Be like, oh, he has this past. Yeah. It's like, oh, be like, he got betrayed and now he just wonders. And it's like, okay. Now, maybe they explain a little bit in the, the AMA series, but I haven't watched it yet. I just, I was watching this and going, I don't understand why I should care. Yeah, agreed. I mean, these fight scenes are good and all, but it really does feel like the plot is an excuse mm -hmm. to go from fight scene to fight scene. Exactly. It's plot convenience. Uh, I don't care. I don't yeah. care. Agreed. What's your second dislike? My second dislike would be molten gold. <laughs> so our, our big final plot convenience story beat of this movie is that Jubei is now, oh my gosh, the girl I've fallen in love with over this journey has now been betrayed and now died and i got to smooch her for once and i got her headband so now i'm a mad ninja who's gonna go slaughter some people and now he runs into now he sees his arch enemy who he thought he had killed They're like oh he's in the afterlife it's like no he's alive what <laughs> granted i will say this it's the only thing i will say positive about this okay if you're going to the only way you're really going to quote unquote kill an immortal person mm -hmm. oh i agree he's trapping them in metal underneath the water oh i, I agree mean, i agree i agree it's gonna be hard for them to break out i don't care how good their jutsu is that that is true so here here's my problem with this so watching this i'm thinking in the back of my head it's like wait so i i pause the movie and i watch i'm like wait a minute i can't remember it like there's molten gold in here at some point, because our, our, that's our main villain is since the bottom motion as, mm -hmm. as a as a gold statue, which there again is kind of stupid, but still. Uh, no, it's Japanese. Uh, that's action true. Stuff. It's, I, it's, that sort of thing. I would forgive it's, it's in a, a tokusatsu or a well written story. Yeah, it's 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 an action movie that's animated. Yeah, so but, if the story had been well written, I wouldn't care as much. Yeah, and the story wasn't well written very well be like there's points where it's well written here and there but overall it's kind of i agree with you it's kind of dull but the so i stopped the film because i kept thinking it was like wait how hot does a actual fire on a boat get Not about that hot about 900 degrees gold starts to melt at well now let's be fair did you check a boat that was covered in oil because it was doused in oil no, I do not. But I'm sure it's not that much different. No, it's not. It'll it'll probably read about a thousand degrees. Yeah. Oil 
I mean, like oil, gold, gold starts to starts to melt at 12,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, that's this not is, gold. That's an, that is fool's gold. That's fool's gold. That it's means like, it ain't worth Jack squat. Yeah. So, so you, you, you've killed thousands of people for fool's gold. Great job. <laughs> great job. Great, great, great freaking job. Like you'd be like, you went, you went down to your, your, your golden gray with fool's gold. Great job. So be like, yeah, this whole idea, this whole plot of the very end that they're going to steal all this gold, put in the bottom of their ship. And this, how long does this ship burn? Because it takes a long time to, for that kind of heat to. It takes a long, long time for a a wooden ship to burn, period. Exactly. And it's just like, oh, I I, I looked it up because they're going to, I'm a nerd like that. And like how be like if we're using oil or anything to like a house fire, be like I mean, gold just sits there. Be like it will not melt. It, not it takes a, a lot of heat to melt gold, and that kind of heat isn't gonna melt it. Granted, in a better written story, agreed. Wouldn't care because I think oh that's a good that makes sense. It's a good <laughs> way to knock this out. Yeah, I would be able to suspend my disbelief. Yeah. But I'm sitting here going, that ain't gonna work, buddy. <laughs> that don't. That's not gold. No, no, you got fooled. I'm not even sure that's metal the way it's moving. That literally looks more like you're somehow melting a giant keg of water. If you catch my meaning, <laughs> golden water, Russian water. We'll go with that. <laughs> vodka, vodka. I wasn't referring to vodka. <laughs> okay, I was referring to what vodka looks like on the other end. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Catch my meaning. Gotcha. Anyway. Nick, Nick, no, just, uh, okay, I'll say it since there's no kids listening to this episode. Piss. <laughs> Bear. Okay. okay. That was piss. Okay, it looks like urine. Okay. I gotcha. Uh, <laughs> Jiminy Cricket's on a bugger stick. <laughs> yeah, because it doesn't look like gold. Like the fact we like, oh, it caught fire and melted. That's not how fire works with like, this is not magic fire. This is not magic fire, this people. This is regular fire. That's the thing. You called it magic fire? All bets are off. I don't know how magic fire works. Exactly. But it's regular it's a, fire? It's a sailing ship. It's like, or a rowing ship rules. at this point. Yeah. Like, at, wor- at most, it's a sailing ship. It has sails on it. Or worse, it's a rowing ship. And now it's on a voyage to the bottom of the sea. Exactly. Well, no, 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 it's not. Like the Bottom gold, the, river. the the gold deals on the river, but the 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 main mass of the ship stays above water because that's where our characters are at the end of the film. Oh, that's just so they can stand on the on the top of the sails like true ninja. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, be like the the idea of like, oh, I'm gonna disc- like totally just buy this, not for three seconds, pal. It's like no, the 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 nerdy art nerd in me says no. You cannot melt that much gold that quickly to make a river of gold that you fall into and become a gold monster. You are not Bio Broly. What's said about that movie? The better. <laughs> better. Uh, I watched the movie once. What the heck? That will not be a movie we watch, <laughs> except for bad movie month. <laughs> One bad movie month, not this bad movie month. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, the, yeah, the river of molten gold. I didn't buy for three seconds. So yeah, that's my number two. It's like, is molten gold. My second dislike, while is not Kigero herself. Okay, it is her jutsu. Is the fa- let me explain? Okay, okay. Let me explain because it's actually not explain yourself, good sir. The, the nudity, while I don't like it, right, is a separate issue here. Okay, <laughs> that's my third dislike, but ah. my second dislike. Okay, fair enough. Go ahead and warn you. Fair. It is. Spoil it. No, my second dislike though is her jutsu <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Is okay, she immune okay. to every poison and venom under the sun? Apparently. And then somehow she can hold it in her system so that anybody who even touches her, much less all of the other things that they can do with her. Exactly. Immediately kills them. 
Well, maybe not immediately because our rock dude didn't die immediately. True, the rock dude did take a couple of days, but he, he kind of crumbled. Somehow did kill him. Yes, it did. And it was a couple of days, so it's like, are we even sure Jubei is going to survive? Because he even t- touches it with their bare hand, with his bare hands. Yes, and the only reason we think he will is because old crotchety old man says. Oh, the uh, her poison is strong enough to destroy your poison. Blocking uh, block me! Blocking me! What the heck is that? Man? Yeah, it was like poisons uh, do not attack poisons. They they don't counteract each other. I mean, I, they could what? could technically could work as the antidote for the other, but you never can say that. It's, it's That's so, not what you said. It says, "Oh, her it, you, the poison I put into you is specifically designed to counteract be counteracted by the poison in her." Now hang on just a second. Mm-hmm. Her poison is not generated by her. No. It is what is put into her by all the other things. So technically, unless you knew she was going to get bit by Snake Lady, mm-hmm. you Boy. don't know what kind of demonic exactly demon jutsu poison is in her. Right. Her jutsu does it make sense no it doesn't and i can't granted like i said better written it was more well thought out agree better explain like this is something she perfected so that she could be the wine taster for the emperor yeah which is what i assume is why she yeah. got it in the first place or whoever their leader is yeah who's gone that's why her she goes leader. with the other people yeah her clan leader yeah whomever yes you explain it like that, I could go with it. But you didn't. No. You just said, oh, it's she's got an interesting jutsu. She she kills anyone she has relations with. Yes. And then she explains later that it's like anybody who touches me will die. Not 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 having a biblical relationship with them. Which thing just granted that makes me think, okay, you're rogue. Yeah, pretty much. Except rogue was a likable character. Yeah, that's true. I don't really hate Kagero as a no, character. No, no, no. But it's like, this is not a person I'd want to go get to know. So yeah, it's like she's not a horrible person. It's just like you know what, you do you, Buttercup. You do you. Uh, but her ninja power, her ninja, ninja magic. Yes, because ninja magic is a thing in this. Mm-hmm. Granted, they don't explain it, but you don't really shouldn't have to explain ninja magic. Yeah, but if you put your spotlight on a specific ninja magic like the story is required to do yeah. so that it makes sense mm-hmm. you should know it top to bottom and work through everything granted this may have been something that was lost in translation yeah this may make more sense in japanese this may be a japanese thing in their culture that i don't know it's not explained very well over here it's the one thing i think it, it, it's the one thing I I would blame more on the English dub, even though the English dub is very well written. Mm-hmm. It's just one of those things where it's like, it's not explained very well how this works. And maybe it wasn't explained very well how it worked in the other, in the original, because people would understand how this works. Even though he says it's a very strange jutsu. I'm just still looking at it and going, I don't follow, A, I don't follow how she can be, have all these, how no poison can affect her mm-hmm. and she can store it up to give it to other people. A and B, how this perfectly works as an antidote for Jubei. Yeah. Makes None of that makes, makes no sense. I don't even think Jubei was ever actually poisoned. We see him throw up blood every once in a while, but that could be coincidence. Yes. I, I'm half convinced that after the credits of this movie roll mm-hmm. and he's off in the middle of the, off in the sunset, he finally just kills over and dies. Because that makes more sense than anything else I saw. Yeah, because the, the only really explanation we give is that him and what is her name again? Kira? Kira. I think I'm saying that right. Yeah, Kira. They do kiss at the very end. So right. that, then, that, that would kind of, uh, the way it's described in the story, that if she if they even kiss her, be like, it'll it'll kill her. So it makes that assumption that be like, be like that'll counteract the poison within him. But it makes no sense. But plot. Just explain it mm-hmm. give me a give me yeah. an excuse why the ninja magic works the way it does because you don't anyway yeah 
what is your third dislike? My third like now, Grant, dislike. I am going dislike. I am going to throw a big warning up here for this one. I have a feeling our third dislike is the same. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to throw a warning up here. So if you are listening with young children, you might want to turn us off for a minute because this one's going to be a little more graphic. We're going to be using worse terms than piss. Yes, exactly. So just be like for the next segment, just turn it off or, you know, come back in later and listen to us later because this one's a little more sensitive subjects and don't want to talk to this in front of the little kids. So right now, yes. make sure your little ones are at an earshot. All right, of course, so, in my opinion, you should have turned us off a long time ago if that was the case. Yes. So uh, my third like, three, dislike. two, dislike, three, two, one. All the freaking sexual assaults. Yeah. Yeah. This will be like, it's just like, what, again, what the hell? You know, when, I, I, I I understand like they're they're doing it because they want to be graphic. They want to do this right. and this and this. And I feel like the oh my gosh, what? And granted, we complained. All three of us yeah. complained on the uh, Doctor Strange episode. All the innuendo. Oh, that yeah. was in there that we felt didn't add yeah. to the story. Yeah, that's true. Even though it it may not have hit exactly the same if it didn't yeah. have that. Yeah. Beside the point, this is like. You could have done this a lot classier. Yeah, agreed. You could have explained. You could have. Hey, don't make that her jutsu. Just have her be poison ivy and, and kill people by touching them. That's just as cool. Yeah. And you don't have to show as much. Yeah, agreed. And like the, the point I want to get to and there again, be like throwing that caution up there first is the fact that like she is sexually assaulted by our like our first big main villain. And graphically, graphically, extremely graphically. And it's just like, oh my gosh. And, you know, thankfully the, the son of a biscuit actually dies because of it, which I, I was like, okay, he gets his observes for that. Right. But then again, she's sexually assaulted again by a villain. It's just like, what is her name again? Kiro. Kiro. Yeah, poor Kiro as a character. Be like, this, this woman cannot catch a break. Everybody just wants to violate her in some capacity is so incredibly sad. And now I'm I'm not saying this because of modern modern things or anything. I'm saying because treating another human being like they're just an object is terrible. Throwing this out there just okay. for the movie's point of view. Yeah. Playing devil's advocate, I guess. Okay. Her story's supposed to be tragic. Oh yeah, I know. And this that. is just how they're doing that. Oh, I agree. But that doesn't mean we have to like no, it. No, we shouldn't like it. No, we definitely neither yeah. one of us like that this occurs no. in the film no absolutely not you could have still made this character cool and awesome just by having her kill people just by touching them because of all exactly. the poisons in her body yeah exactly like you could have done something so well done so well crafted to make a story like that instead of making her a like an object for people to assault and which, an excuse to draw boobs yeah exactly because there is so much freaking nudity in this movie now, granted, it's the 90s. That's all they did anime at that point. I know. The 80s, this. 90s. Well, it's but not all they did. It's just a lot of what got brought over was, here. It was because, a lot that got brought over because here. Because the 90s, the anime industry, this, that's before the anime boom. Yeah. So a lot of what was coming over here was with stuff that would play right. well on a college campus. Very true. We'll put it that way. Yeah, very true. I'm watching this and going, is this supposed to be sexy? Because it ain't. This no. is disturbing. Yeah, extremely disturbing. This, this is you. You can't even claim that someone could get off on this. This is just. It's just a. Th it, yeah, exactly. So, like, I, I nasty. I, 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 both, I, this film can be nasty. It can very, very nasty. Because, like, again, eighties, nineties anime that came over here in the states were extremely graphic because it was. Like it was, it was exciting to younger viewers. And so now you're exposing younger viewers to this kind of garbage. Um, this high kind of school, maybe high school, same thing. But like you're, you're exposing young children to this kind of graphic violence towards other people of the opposite sex and making it perfectly fine in some capacities. Right. Now I do know the 98 dub probably was, uh, Trent made because of the anime boom because that would oh, have yeah. been 97 98 when pokemon and mm -hmm. dragon ball yeah, exactly really were starting to make an impact over here yeah uh and this was definitely aimed more for the older audience because Agreed. i'll be honest 
Agreed. I hadn't heard of this film prior mm-hmm. to you putting it on the list. Yeah. I looked at that and thought, oh, that's going to be some like kid thing of a like, Naruto knockoff, <laughs> isn't it? You're just putting this on the list to be funny. Oh, gosh. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Not at all. Nope. In fact, here's the thing. I have actually seen a clip from this film before. I did not know it was from this film. Okay. I saw it when, uh, as part of uh, an online collection of, of, of uh, edited clips called AMV Hell. Yeah, I think I've seen one of those. Right. This was in one of those. I remember, oh, okay. And uh, I remember they were playing. I didn't. There, there was no joke to this particular setup. It was just playing the scenes where different scenes with Keoru and Jubei, and they were playing the music, uh, you're, you're the Devil in Disguise, mm-hmm. on top of it. Yeah. It's like, that's not funny. I don't get the joke. <laughs> oh, well, moving on. And then later on, I'm watching this one go, Hang on, I recognize these characters. Why do I recognize these characters? Oh, yes, I am hell. <laughs> and I didn't know when I watched that that there was so much explicitness yeah. in this film. And yes. when the film started, I'm thinking this is going to be, this This should be an action-packed ninja thing. It looks like it's mm-hmm. made more for an adult audience. More Maybe it's a serious piece, but maybe it's a, like a, a movie version of like Roroni Kenshin, but with a more darker tone okay fair that's what i was thinking when this yeah. started and i was kind of hoping that was what this was going to be until rock dude and her yeah that scene and it's like oh that's not what the, this is not roroni ken shit no absolutely not and now i'm going to be judging every character by the fact that the characters can't be like very few of the characters are going to have the capability of being like well mm-hmm. that's just not what this is exactly and the the fact that you have these scenes. Yeah. And it feels like you, granted, this probably did happen in Japan back then. I'm not saying it did. I'm not did. saying this is not somewhat accurate to the time period. Yes. The ninja magic is not, but uh, Fair. I could see this in stories from this time mm-hmm. period. Agree. The time period this is based on. Yeah. So, and I get that this is made for an adult mm-hmm. audience. Yes. How ever mm-hmm. you could have done this i think better without the graphicness yeah and i have a bad feeling i'm gonna repeat myself next week e- maybe anywho my, my i think both our third dislikes yeah. is sex yes which sounds really bad for two straight well, guys. It's, it's, well, it's not really <laughs> sex. It's more sexual assault. Sexual assault. Sexual assault. And, 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 and the most graphic and detail nudity. ever. Yeah. Sexual assault, unnecessary nudity. Yeah. That's what the problem with this, that, that's the biggest problem this film yeah. has. On that note, <laughs> what are you reading this film? Oh my gosh. So, you like, you, you have all of these amazing, 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 like, attributes this film has. From design to animation to all this other great stuff. And then it just goes mump, mump, thump. And I, I'm, I am so torn with this because I'd be like, I have loved this movie animation wise for years. And watching it now, it's just like, oh, oh, that's just not good. That is not good at all. Uh, so I'm going to give this, oh my gosh, uh, probably a six, probably a six. Be like, it is, uh, there again, if you are underage, do not watch this period. Uh, and if I, I'm not going to repeat myself because I've repeated myself twice already in this, this episode, um, uh, uh, there again, be like, uh, if you're underage, do not watch this film at all. Uh, until you're of age, watch, don't watch it. So. Um. So yeah, I'll I'll give it a six because again, a great animation, story design. Uh, some of the stories very well done. Uh, Jubei is a character I love that character to death because he's just the the uh, the uh, the paladin among just denizen of thieves or denizen of uh den of thieves. Yeah, den of thieves or horrendous people. Yeah. Uh. Because they're gonna be like you, you can you can pull that into kind of a like a Christian parallel in some fashion and form that you have the uh, you you live in this world 
full of debauchery and mm -hmm. sinful desires, but you be like, as a Christian, you kind of stand out. Be like, if you're a true devoted disciple yeah. of Christ or born again, be like, you stand out like a sore thumb and people notice it. And it's like, they, they know you by your reputation of who you are. If you are a true born again, Christian, not someone who used to be like, Oh, I said a prayer when I was five years old and I lived a debauched life and I might go to church every once in a while. But, uh, but like, it, it's kind of that way. It's got a small parallel to that. If you do have that relationship with Christ and you have a firm foundation and that you are going to do the right thing when it comes to like, you know, the, the wrongs in this world and you're going to point people to Jesus and kind of like Jubei is that bright light and everything and everything else around so dark and so evil. And, uh, I would not uh, correlate that he is a Jesus figure in this movie at all, but he is a, a bright example in a very, very dark world. And that's what, as a Christian, uh, we are strive to be is that bright world, that bright, that, that lamp that is hiding under a, a bushel or, mm -hmm. a, or, a, or a, what is it in the scripture? Basket? A basket, being hidden under a basket. We should be able to hide under blood. a bushel, I think it's from the actual song. That is true. This that is, is true. a light of mine. This is a lot of mine, right? But uh yeah, just being that light of the world to uh inside of a very, very dark and disturbing world. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a six. Giving this movie a five. Okay. I don't like this movie. Okay. Like I said, I for most of this film, I was distracted. wasn't really watching it very yeah, closely. Fair. Uh, I can tell you the scene between her and Tessai, Rocker Dude, whatever, is what got me uninterested in the film. Okay, fair enough. I still watched it. I finished it. I kept an eye out for action scenes, but the story itself, I didn't care about. I think it's well animated. Yeah. Uh, do I think it, I, because of how well it's animated, I can't lower it. Yeah. Past five Fair, But for story reasons for um, creative decisions that I disagree with. Yeah. I really wish I could rate it lower than five. Okay. So yeah, five. Okay. Which brings us to the end of this section. We need to, uh, play some bumpers and on the other side we will talk about what we've been and, watching yeah what are we watching next oppenheimer oppenheimer which we were supposed to watch For this, this week, week but distractions distractions of course the scheduling issues yes that are no longer an issue yes now. but anyway and he has been warned thank you <laughs> yes yeah, so join us next week for oppenheimer <laughs> and then um after the bumpers we'll talk about what we've been watching what's in the news mm -hmm. and some x-men yes this podcast is a proud member of Culture Box. Whether you enjoy geeky reviews, comedy, or original fiction, you can open up the Culture Box and find something excellent for your soul. Point your web browser to culturebox.media. This week, we suggest checking out Geek Devotions. Geek Devotions is a collaboration of devoted geeks that are devoted to letting people know that they are loved. They are not just a podcast. They are an entire network of shows, podcasts, and YouTube videos that are designed to encourage and challenge people in the geek community, bridging the gap between their faith and their geekdoms. They produce a weekly geek culture-infused devotional. There is their podcast, Com Talk. There's another podcast where they read books, allegedly. There's also another podcast where uh, they look through the Gundam Watch. And uh, if you're into, if you like movies, just like we do, you can check out them reviewing bad movies over at the bottom shelf. So uh, you can find all their content and more uh, at uh, geekdevotions.com. The Cellcast would like to thank the following patrons. Ashley and Francisco Ruiz, Book of Gaming, PaulJPowers.com. And I swear and I'll edit this eventually. Watch. To get your name on the show, plus uncut episodes, early access to the Cellcast, plus reviews and special art from Jacob, please donate to us on Patreon. So, Jacob, I have a question for you. What have you been watching? What have I been watching? So, 
uh last weekend uh me and my girlfriend okay story time with this one so uh we first we're gonna go watch uh sound of freedom and then i put oppenheimer as a suggestion for our Cellcast plus episode and i didn't and hear it we never discussed we it. never discussed it we never discussed it. it never came up in conversation no and then we we talk about it and it's like oh yeah He's great with it. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go watch it next week. And I said, like, okay, great. And then I, 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 I very, uh, I asked my girlfriend to be like, it's like, hey, are you cool watching Oppenheimer? He's like, sure thing. And so then we we go to Tyler, we meet up. Meanwhile, it hadn't occurred to me that I was originally going to watch Oppenheimer with my parents, and we hadn't discussed when we were going to watch it, and right. it came up that we were going to watch it tomorrow however after the story that changed yes so um so we originally were gonna go to one theater i think it was uh grand slam in tyler texas we were gonna go to there and the line was packed for the uh it was it was barbenheimer weekend it was, what did you expect yeah it was barbenheimer weekend so if those I can't even, believe that was a that was a thing. That was brilliant marketing. Do not get me wrong. But what that, marketing is just what people decided to do. That is true. It's like, oh yeah, we're gonna go see Barbie. This, hey, let's go Barbie. Hey, da, 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 whatever. Oh, Party. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Atomic bombs falling. This isn't Doctor Strange Love. <laughs> we'll meet again. <laughs> Anyways, and you have Oppenheimer. So apparently people were doing double features of those these two films. It's like, okay, that's an interesting one. Pink, life and happy, and then you get the atomic bomb. <laughs> or the creation well, of the from atomic bomb. What I understand, it's really not about the atomic bomb, which is gonna be disappointing. Kind of. Kind but of anyway. So yeah, we wound up going to another theater. We went to a uh, studio movie girl, and in the the show the show the show itself was almost sold out. We could not sit together. So I was sitting behind her and uh, we, I, I had a great time. She didn't, unfortunately, uh, it wasn't the story. It wasn't the movie itself. She enjoyed the movie and, but it was more the, the food we consumed while we were there. It did not settle her stomach. So sorry again, Ashley. And uh, so watched Oppenheimer really good movie from my opinion. Now I'm not going to go any further because my co-host here has not seen it yet. So I will not spoil it. So I just recommend go watch it, but it does have scenes in there that are decaying nudity and graphic. So like I said some of my thoughts this week will be repeated probably. <laughs> but uh, so I get done. Uh, so I, for some weird reason, I'm just looking for a movie to put on, to put on and just watch. I, I turn on a film that I've seen before in the past. And I enjoyed the movie when I was younger. Now, Grant, I was younger when I watched this than my dad, my father, allowed us to watch Die Hard in Lethal Weapon when I was younger. Now, Grant, he thought we were mature enough to watch this. Totally understandable. I did not watch this movie when I was three years old. I don't think. So it's on Netflix. Roadhouse. Uh, starring... Um, Oh, come on. Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze. Thank you, Patrick Swayze. Oh, my gosh. This movie is so, so dumb story-wise. It's it's an 80s action schlock movie with almost zero plot. The villains are so ham-fistedly stupid. And it's this poor little town where Patrick Swayze's character comes in. He's going to straighten up this bar. And everybody hates him, or all the bad guys are bad for bad guy's sake. And it's just me like you have goof idiot number one, who's our main villain, and then our goof idiot number two is our you know our our our, our rival who also knows how to kick. So yeah, the story is so ridiculously dumb, and it it's one of those be like, wow, I think I lost brain cells watching this. Like it's 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 a fun schlocky film. It's got nudity. It's got all this terrible, you know, stuff. I'm 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 seeing a trend of films here. 
Not intentional. Let's say that's not intentionally. But uh detecting a trend. That's what I meant. You're to detecting say. a trend. Radar's gone off. Radar, radar, radar. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I watched, I got the way through half of it. I'm like, really? It's like really your bad guy shows up after a fire that he started, shows up in the the double deuce, which is the bar which they're at, and he's just sitting there, and then he gets his his girlfriend. I'm not sure if it's his girlfriend or the the other baddie's girlfriend. I don't know who she really is. She's just a a, a blonde bombshell character. And uh and then all of a sudden be like there's all these rules set up for uh the what the bouncers to do the cooler who is swayze and uh it's like yeah don't get in the fights and then all of a sudden oh the the big bad guy who knows martial arts be like oh he wants to fight people oh yeah let's start to fight with that that's dumb it's stupid like it's it's a movie i remember as a kid watching as an adult who now has five years of being a reviewer under his belt it's like wow this movie is dumb so that is what I watched. And then on the way, so we had a kind of a emergency in our singles group. Our leader, Wendy Primo, uh, had uh, had to go to the hospital. We were all worried for her. Thankfully and preferably, she's doing well. And uh, apparently it was due to stress, not anything, no strokes. Thank the Lord. And uh, so Thursday, normally we do Bible study, but we didn't have Bible study that night. So we, a bunch of us guys met up at a restaurant close to where I work. And we had a very wonderful time of fellowship and goofing around and just being guys. And uh, so on the way over there, not thinking, because they're going to, it's like, oh, I remember listening to this podcast. And I was like, this sounds like a great idea. And I just plug in the first episode they plug in, which the trial never, of Mag- never occurred to you to actually go back to where you left off. No, I didn't. I was like, you know what? This can be fun. So I listened to it. I'm like, oh my gosh. It's like, wow, this is really good. Oh, yeah, I've listened to this before. And it's like, oh, okay. You know, obviously, it's it's X-Men, the audio drama, which apparently the pa- we are part of the Patreon. Yes. Which sounds great. So, so I'm listening to this entire thing. Walking, I'm walking around because I'm always early to stuff. And so I'm, I'm sitting there, and it, the, the credits are rolling. And then it's just like it cuts. And then you hear Deadpool. Voice by our, our 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 podcast friend Nate Marchan, and I am dying. <laughs> I am so dying because they hear him voice Deadpool in the, the X Men audio drama. I'm not sure if he'll show up in season season four. Yeah, season four. Season four. I don't. I don't know if he's going to show up, but that was such a great little cameo to where he be like. Deadpool as a character references Marchand himself and his other character he voices in Power Rangers. <laughs> and and many, all the other actors who have been voicing people in X-Men the animated series. Yes. Yes. So great. So wonderful. So Nate, wonderful job. Amazing. So then I started, I was like, wait a minute. I, feel like I didn't go back to where I was. And I think for the last day and a half, that's all I've been listening to is x-men the audio drama so if you like really really good audio dramas of a very french famous franchise such as x-men you should go listen to this is very well done so yes that is what i've been watching and listening and minus a lot of youtube about history because there again i just wouldn't watch went and watched oppenheimer so i want to learn well, that you than- wanted to know if gold would melt at that temperature well that wasn't youtube that was google that mean you couldn't watch it on YouTube. That is true, but I didn't. So, what have you been watching, listening to, or in your case, playing? Well, <laughs> I mentioned last Friday during our news segment. Yes, that the episode that was going to air yesterday of Star Trek: Strange New Worlds mm-hmm. was going to be the. Uh, crossover episode yes. with Lower Decks. Yes. So, imagine my surprise. Mm. About four or five o'clock, I get a text message from uh, one of several message groups I'm in mm. that says, 
hey guys the lower decks crossover just dropped well i'm not gonna i'm gonna stop what i have been doing <laughs> and i go and i watch those old scientists oh, is the gosh. name of the episode mm-hmm. Now, I will say this right now. This is, while it is a Strange New Worlds episode, it is basically a Lower Decks episode in Strange New Worlds. Really? It is really that kind of feel. There is enough stuff from Strange New Worlds that I am going to have to explain some stuff before you watch it. Okay. And granted, the last time on Strange New Worlds thing should tell you a lot, but... I gotcha. It won't explain that smile. Okay. That's all I'm going to say okay. uh, for now. Okay. It's going to ways until we get, we're going to be able to talk about this. Okay. But, um, green. Oh, th- it was such a good episode. Uh, because so, you know, so far, Strange in the World is all, it's been like, oh, yeah, this is the 23rd century, all this other stuff. We're, we're not, we can't mention anything that occurs after this point chronologically. And then Boimler shows up. Kudos for how they did that, I will say. That okay. made a lot of sense. Okay. And eventually Mariner, too. Because she does show up. And the, does she wreak havoc and get away with it? Why do you want me to spoil stuff? Because whether she does or not, that would be spoiling. So she does. I didn't say that. <laughs> okay. I, all I I'm now say- trying to think, <laughs> did she break stuff? Probably no. she did, because it's, boy- it's Mariner. No, no, no. I mean. It probably gets away with it. The, no. Honestly, she she is. They 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 both are still their lower deck selves. Okay. Don't get me wrong. Okay. But she is. She's as bad as Boimler. That's all I'm gonna say. Does Pike at least put her in her place? <laughs> no need to. She's not as bad as you're thinking. Okay. You you are you you are still thinking of her in season one, not in season three, Mariner. Even though she has some season one ishness in her in season three. Yeah. <laughs> She has no, the only thing she gets in trouble for is jumping in after Boimler. Okay, then. It's the only thing that she technically did that she should not have done. Oh, okay. But she's still technically doing her job as she was the commanding officer for the mission. Gotcha. That's as far as I'm going to explain about I gotcha. that. I gotcha. However, her and her was sweet. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna say. Okay. So there, there again, on, 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 on the actual plot. There are some nice little cool things like the fact that uh, both Tawny Newsom, who plays Mariner, mm. and uh, Jack Quaid, who plays Boimler, they, you can tell they went and watched uh, and studied how their characters move in Lower Decks. Because of so the voice they, actors. So they could match them. Because they never actually acted like the characters outside of the voice acting. Oh, okay. So th- there are some subtle things in there that when I caught it, go, He's actually doing the power walk that Boimler does in so many episodes. You know the one I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. He actually does that at one point. I'm going, wow. <laughs> Didn't expect that. And there was a point there where they made a connection. I go, please say No Way Wells is about to show up in this thing. Please say No, say no Way Wells is about to show up. You know, the one that plays uh, Tendi. Yeah. There's a point in here where I was watching. I was like, please say she's about to show up. Because this is going to be awesome if she does. <laughs> She's not going to be playing Tindy, but it would be awesome if she did. But not going there. Ah, but I will say there is some nice. The, the there are two instances that are there are animated parts of this thing, mm-hmm. and there are two points involving the Strange New Worlds locale mm. that are done very well. And when I was watching it, I was going. <laughs> For like the exact Eddie opposite reason that I would do it in Lower Decks because Strange New Worlds is not referencing Lower Decks. <laughs> Let's just say there was a point in one section where I go, "What is? Why is he smiling? What does he know?" <laughs> all, all I can say is I know Strange New Worlds is in the past, and it's, Lower Decks is in the future. Five years before the original series, yes. And Lower Decks is in the future. Lower Decks is one starts one year after Star Trek Nemesis. Oh, okay. movie wise, that's right. That being said, 
<laughs> that being said, time <laughs> travel shenanigans, <laughs> of course, have changed things. If you want to understand the whole story from beginning to end of Star Trek, I can now no longer suggest chronologically. I have to say you have to watch it in series order. Oh, wow. If you're wanting to watch it where it makes sense story-wise because they made... Okay. Minor thing, and then I will move on. Okay. Since the Abrams verse films came out, right? I'm not saying this is a judgment call in the Abrams films. I'm saying this is the first time it happened. Mm -hmm. There has been an updating to uh, continuity. Okay. That they had not touched on before. Mm -hmm. Up and okay, so in Star Trek continuity, this will mm -hmm. be very quick. Yeah. There are three. There, there are two things that we knew happened between 1966, when Star Trek first aired. Mm -hmm. And the beginning of Star Trek, the original series. Yes. That, you know, that there were things that had to happen for the quote unquote future to take place. Mm. This being the eugenics wars that mm. ended when Khan went into space in 1996, mm -hmm. which of course didn't happen in real life. Right. Thankfully. <laughs> and Zephram Cochran inventing the warp drive that we mm. know by first contact happens, uh, causes first contact to occur on April 5th, 2063. Yeah. Okay. Up until, uh, sorry, brain fart. Uh, there had uh, starting in the Abrams verse films. This is the okay. first time we saw it. There is obviously a change to. There's some change had to have occurred because yeah. there is a aesthetic change to how things look. Yeah. Most people who don't care about this stuff and think I'm a nut. <laughs> Would say it's just because they rebooted and re envisioned it. Yeah. Granted, that is physically the reason why it occurred. Yes. However, <laughs> there's a reason I'm, I'm harping on this. In, right. In Star Trek, in previous Star Trek appearances where they had to go back to, for one reason or another, the original Enterprise. Okay. They recreated the 1965 set as ridiculous as it looks for, in modern television. Right. But starting with the Abrams vs. films, they updated the design to look different. Also, because that's when they started recasting characters, they uh, the uh, uh, the way uh, the characterizations of some of these famous characters are changed slightly depending on who's doing the performance. Right. Plus, you get into Discovery and you get the whole thing where technically Spock has an adopted sister, mm. who I hate. <laughs> But that's beside the point. Plot convenience, anybody? Are you aware that the term Mary Sue? Yes, is from Star Trek. Originally was from Star Trek fan fiction. Yeah, I remember. And you would think that the writers of Star Trek, knowing this, would do their dead level best to not incorporate a Mary Sue into the actual show. But they did. But they did. Yeah. More on that. That that's neither here nor there. I'm trying to get back to my point. Yes, give your point. My point is. Between the revisits to the previous century, the changes in timelines that have occurred, there's been a, well, when did any of this stuff start to happen? Yeah. One line, two episodes ago, okay. in Strange New Worlds fixed everything. Okay. Mostly because it just pushed everything into place finally. Because it was growing issues. And then this just kind of caused everything to just fall into place where it mm -hmm. needed to fall. Because of time travel shenanigans that technically occurred in Enterprise of all shows. Okay. The timeline has changed slightly, but the fact that a madman, an event called the Eugenics Wars that was led by Khan, Noonie, and Singh has to occur. Because no matter what this particular Romulan tried to do, they couldn't stop it from happening. It just kept happening. In fact, apparently she started trying it back when he was supposed to go off into space in 1992. So already there was a change in the way things work since it was already pushed off to 96 when we knew about it. Okay. <laughs> and now 2030s is when it's supposed to take place. Okay, then. <laughs> so, yeah, it's getting real tight on that 1963 for World War III to occur. And now we have to include another civil war for United States because that's now a thing. Okay. Anyway, anyway, all of that 
it's probably y'all probably don't even care what I'm talking about. Because I'll be like, there, there again, and another Kirk. Actually, he's not a bad Kirk, but we'll get there later. You won't so, even run into that Kirk. Probably not. But, but all, all I have to do is say is like, whenever Drew brings up Star Trek, it's always something really nerdy and really cool that he brings up. I appreciate that. Yeah, because it's like, oh my gosh, he geeks out about it beyond belief. Because it's so, just, just let him write it out. Star Trek was my first geek though. Of course. Okay, so it's, my, it's my first geek love. I'm gonna, I know it better than I know most things. Yes, agreed. So and it's, it's, it's cool when he does it. It's funny and cool every time he does it. Moving on. So yes. I watched the Lower Decks crossover, and mm. the fun thing is, is since the Lower Decks crossover, yes, with Stranger New Worlds came out on a day separate from the normal release of strange new worlds they moved they, they actually went ahead and released another new episode of strange new worlds last night hmm. and it's the darkest thing star trek has put on screen period and yet it was a good episode hmm. yes artsy stuff there is going to be a musical episode next week that'll be fun <laughs> okay i'll show there, you a clip okay you get lower decks you get a dark episode, now you get a musical. Okay. It's called a darkness sandwich. <laughs> white bread, dark meat. White bread, dark meat. <laughs> it's a hamburger. Star Trek hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> it's called wheat bread. It's healthier. <laughs> that doesn't fit my illustration. <laughs> All right, fine then. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> along with those, along with watching Star Trek, okay. What else did I watch? I don't know. A Trek burger, oh, apparently. I actually do know. Uh, when I went over to Chase this Sunday night, yeah, we ended up binging like most of Love After World Domination. <laughs> okay, we went through like five uh, eight of the 12 episodes wow uh, and we were both saying why did we stop watching the show it's brilliant <laughs> this is the uh romeo and juliet with super sentai oh okay show. that show okay. yes that yeah. show okay that show it was and it is funny it is hilarious i got you uh it's not going to beat Spy Family onto the animated series segment of this show but i got you it's definitely going to be up there um but yeah, uh, we watched that, uh, and then I have been playing... When I have been playing games, I've been playing some Yakuza 2 Kiwami. Okay. That's been fun, though I have a feeling once I kick you out of the studio tonight, I may be jumping back into Final Fantasy fourteen because... There. Today was Fan Fest. Oh. We had announcements. Oh, okay. This looks like... This expansion looks like it's going to be the beach episode of an anime an entire expansion like this it's like oh my wow. word this is gonna be fun that sounds interesting well i mean after we after we not only saved the world but the universe last expansion okay he said we thought we'd give y'all a little break of course you don't believe it's just gonna be a summer vacation do you no no oh, no yoshi p we do not what demon what that what what god are we going to kill this week ah so yeah all right so before, I've been, that's pretty much what i've been watching i got playing. you so you you mentioned something that kind of reminded me of something at work today so I, I was i was working where i work and uh, i work with customers and so in the morning be like parents bring in their kiddos so that's always fun so this one little kid be like it's, it's a you know two little kids in a cart and uh, they're the coolest hair ever and uh so i'm sitting there doing my thing and the little boy points me like he says something. I don't know what he said, but he's like, he's points to my, like my tooth because I'm, I'm missing a tooth. I'm missing a tooth. It's a natural, natural thing. Apparently it's genetic because it's through my dad's side of the family. But he point he points to my tooth. No one has ever done this. Pointed to my tooth, which is missing right here. And uh, it's like, what happened to your tooth? I'm like, okay. I lost it during a football practice while I was in middle school and it never grew back because it was a baby tooth. There's not an adult tooth underneath that. So I had a little kid who's probably like three or four point that out for the first time. I was like, okay, that was interesting. 
Admittedly, I never noticed you were missing a tooth. No. Oh, yeah. I'm missing a tooth right here. Uh, good to know. Yeah. Or if I noticed it, I didn't care enough to know the same. Exactly. So I thought it was the funniest thing. This little kid pointed out. It's like, what happened to your tooth? <laughs> so, yeah, I just thought I would bring that up because I thought it was cute and funny. Fair enough. Okay. So. So, Jacob, what do we have in the news? The Cellcast News with your host, Jacob Heron. Why you think you deal it and going into today's news, apparently on this day, uh, 83 years ago in, uh, let's see, it's July, January, July, what is the date? I don't have a watch. I'm looking today at Today is the 28th. 20, 28th. Okay. So apparently the either yesterday, I think it was yesterday or today. Uh, so on the, in 1940, the first appearance of everybody's eh, what's up, Doc? Character. Mm. What's up, Doc? Yeah, his first Bugs Bunny's first appearance appeared in I think it's a a what a hair short from what Warner Brothers. That is that an actual Bugs Bunny or is that one of the original prototype Bugs? I think Bunnies? it was one of the first prototypes of him, but is it's it? actual Bugs Bunny. Like he doesn't look like he way he does now. Like the way he was drawn yeah. back in the forties. That may be one of the proto bugs. It's probably a lot of proto bugs. Yeah, because that was his first ever appearance. What'd you say the name of the short one? Uh, a wild hair, nineteen forty. Is this the one where Elmer with Elmer Fudd, really fat, El really weird looking Elmer Fudd, yeah. in a, uh, taking photographs, trying to take photographs of, of wild animals? I don't know. I don't remember because I, I remember watching this as a kid when I was Bob go to my grandparents in Louisiana. And oh, no, uh, this is regular looking Elmer. Yeah. Well, that time period, Elmer Fudd. Well, there's another one where it's like one of the proto bugs is, and it's a really strange looking Elmer Fudd, like a yeah. fat Elmer Fudd. Yeah, that might and, be it. And he's photographing. He's he is literally still shooting animals. Yeah. Just on film. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Bugs Bunny made his first appearance yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday in 1940, so 84 years ago, 83 years ago, I believe. Okay, this is actually the first regular bugs. It's it is not one of the proto bugs. Oh, okay, so it's his first actual actual appearance. Actual appearance as Bugs Bunny. Oh, okay, that's what I thought. There's a couple of other quote unquote. It's not technically Bugs Bunny, mm -hmm. but it's basically Bugs Bunny. Yeah, that are before this, and I couldn't remember yeah. which when that actually was. Oh, okay. So for those who follow the news, be like we, be like. Heck, I, I watched a uh, a promo or a, a reel from uh what was what is that? It's a uh, Full House Rewind, one of these podcasts mm -hmm. that one of the original actors who uh, who is the host uh, put out a video saying we're not going to do any more uh, podcasts or videos over because of the SAG strikes. I'm like, okay, I understand you're an actor, but you're doing a podcast. Yeah, but they're gonna be like they they want you know this and this and okay, totally get you want to you know stand by your actor friends. I get it, but and it's just like okay, it's interesting. So speaking of uh, a certain film that came out this year and did very well because we didn't review it because we didn't get up for butts to actually do it. That's not the reason it's doing well. No, it's not. But <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm kind of sad. I saw it. Yeah, you I, saw it. I, I didn't. <laughs> There again, that's my fault. Neither one of us thought, like, we need to react to that. Yeah, we did. Okay, we, we will correct that at the beginning of next year. Yeah, we'll correct that. Beginning of next season. Okay. One of so, the first things we're doing next. Season. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. So apparently, uh, the sequel to Across the Spider Verse has been delayed due to the SAG uh, writer, makes... Writers Guild strikes. Yeah, because you have the Writers Guild and you have the Actors Guild yeah. who, mm -hmm. who uh, both struck, yes. struck, striked, striked at the same time. Yeah, it's probably the actors that's causing this actually this whole probably thing. The writing, I believe, was finished for both films a while back. Yeah, both that and across. Agreed. Outside of you know little 
touches here. And there. Yeah, I get, uh, yeah, because I know they are. I think they're middle of production of Deadpool three with, and it got it got delayed. It got delayed due to the 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 SAG strikes, which I mean, like I understand, be like you're looking for more wages and more opportunities for your writers and your actors for the most part, mm-hmm. but um, and artsy stuff does has a point that legally they cannot as part of the neither the sag guild mm-hmm. or, the, or the writers guild yeah. can actually talk about any projects they have worked on because they can't promote that's true any of those projects while true. the strike is going on because that Very would be considered true. working for the film okay that makes sense that does actually make sense Thank so you if you step. have if if the, i don't know I, I don't know what kind of show you were talking about that's saying that's going on pause uh full house rewind it's a full podcast are they interviewing people? From yeah, films? they're 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 interviewing people from. Oh, it's it is this, uh, yeah, okay. So they're interviewing people. Yeah, they literally can't do that right now. Yeah, so it's, it makes sense. Yeah, okay, you were going Fair. hiatus so we can actually talk. About yeah, exactly, it. exactly. So yeah, that has affected a lot of things going on with animation to movies and that kind of stuff right yeah. now. So yeah, we're going to see a lot of movies that were going to come out later this year being pushed back until next year. And hopefully they get all of this worked out and we can, you know, get our movies back. So to answer the, the thing I brought up a minute ago, whether or not it was a official Bugs Bunny, yes. first time officially Bugs Bunny, or if it was one of the Bugs prototypes, a wild hair is the official appearance of Bugs Bunny. Okay. His ori- the, the apparent first appearance of the character who would evolve okay. into Bugs Bunny. Okay. Who does not have a name. Is the the short is Porky's Hair Hunt? Okay, which literally it's Porky Pig hunting rabbits. So I guess yeah. uh, he's, Elmer he's the, was busy that day. I guess the funny thing is uh, the, the you know who the guy who directed the short who his name is Ben Hardaway who has a nickname really Bugs. I don't know if he's na- if Bugs Bunny is named after him, mm. but I think that's interesting. Okay, interesting. But uh, I can't, of course, I can't put this on the audio portion, but that's the Bugs Bunny I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's definitely a proto prototype. Oh, yeah. Bugs. Early proto Bugs. Doesn't even look like Bugs Bunny. No, it doesn't. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, as of right now, that's all I have right now because of SAG strikes and everything. Yeah, everything's and guilt kind of, strikes. Kind of down right now. It's kind of down right now. But, uh, it's like the, there are some things still coming out, but there again, nothing's getting promoted. Uh, the the new Turtles film is coming out. I know that. Yeah. And uh, that, I, I saw a review over that. Maybe I shouldn't have watched it, but I watched it anyway. Uh, that sounds like an interesting film. Maybe for someone like me who grew up watching Turtles may not like it so much. But... But there it's again, a reimagining, isn't it? Yes, it's a kind of a reimagining. I feel sorry for you, my friend. I've been yes, there. Yes, it's like oh crap. We've all been there when our what, what, what but, it feels but, like our childhood has been poo pooed on. Yes. Anyway, yeah. So that's all I have for news for the news. Unless you have something else, I do not. Okay. So why don't we go ahead and jump into X Men? Previously on X Men. The soggy, over bulky, kind of hoggy superhero, and electrically transistored superhero, and exotically erotic and aquatic superhero. The more superheroes have arrived. That's what messes up. I get wrong every time. X Men, X Men, coming your way. Spider-Man and and his amazing amazing friends, friends. Iceman and Firestar. X 
been the animated series. Yes. Uh, our first episode tonight, Xavier Remembers. Mm-hmm. First aired on April 27th, 1996. Not as a season five episode, but the end of season four. Yes. Technically. Technically. <laughs> it was directed by Larry Houston and Fred Miller and written by Stephanie Matheson. In this episode, when Professor X suffers a slight concussion, which I missed that part. I did his too. powerful psychic mind is suddenly open to manipulation. Guest cast for this includes Chris Britton as Mr. Sinister, mm-hmm. Don Franks as Sabretooth, and Maurice Dean Wint as the Shadow King. Whoa. Trivia for this episode. There is none. <laughs> Fair. I looked everywhere. Really? Nobody had any trivia for this episode. Wow. It's that forgettable. <laughs> And that is my problem with this episode. It is very forgettable. It is. This, I do not understand what ha- I couldn't even follow this episode. It was so weird. Agreed. Like you, you had this point where like uh, Cyclops says something about, oh, the professor bumped his head and now be like, he's in a coma. And then you see all this astro plane well, stuff going different times. We get different occurrences as to where the X-Men are. At one point they're out on the, they're they're getting attacked by their worst fears yeah of course storms is in closed spaces which like looks weird but anyway yeah but then they're all watching over xavier while he's having his concussion in the middle of the and he keeps saying weird things it's like wait a minute which one is the real taxman team right here which ones are in his head i never figured it out because by the end apparently it was the one being attacked by their fears yeah not the one in the watching over him i'm like what is going on in this episode is it who was smoking something (laughs) in this episode oh my gosh i'd be like there there are parts of i enjoyed where you got to see from xavier's viewpoint to seeing his students right you know like they're growing from when they were younger to the blue the the old blue uh suits to their modern suits that was the thing i saw the 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 little image on disney plus the the thumbnail Mm -hmm. for this episode and i go and oh we're actually going to have an episode where we're going to be looking back on the first mission of the Mm -hmm. x-men with the original team we may even get a good look at uh beast before he got furry furry nope that's not what this is we don't even get a good look at any of the team other than angel is on the team yeah which we know if, that couldn't have happened in this continuity <laughs> exactly angel's not on the team in this continuity he doesn't know anybody didn't know who they were in season one when he got turned into archangel come on <laughs> hey, come on like you, you you put him in there in this episode but then you said earlier that he didn't know nothing about the X-Men. This continuity is weird. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Which I, I, I guess that technically was taking place in Xavier's mind. So maybe he got confused. Maybe. Even I though he's a, bro- he's a, he's a brilliant he's a br- genius. He's a brilliant scientist. He's yeah. working on this strange moon thing. Now you don't know what I'm talking about there. No. Strange moon thing. I was quoting a Dragon Ball Z abridged thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, no idea. Anyway, unless he turns into a big monkey. No. Okay. That would be interesting. <laughs> In a giant wheelchair. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> that was horrible. I'm oh sorry. That was horrible. I think like, there is a, a one little bit of trivia in this. I think I realized. <laughs> this is the first episode chronologically in which Jean Grey is back in her old uniform since the beginning of season three. Yes. Oh my gosh. And I think it's, I don't remember if it's this episode or the next one where Storm is wearing her green outfit. This is a stupid episode. Is, I'm sorry. Agreed. I, I it wanted is. to enjoy this, but it's like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, me either. And I don't care. It's so baffling. It's what I was watching world? this episode and going, wow, this is going to be two for two. I hate to see how three is going to go. Well, the the thing I did enjoy about it because they do we're we are dealing with uh, crap. Who's the villain in this one? The uh, I said his name, but yeah, I don't remember. I like, like the Dark Specter or no, something. It's, it's, it's not uh, Power Rangers. Shadow King. Shadow it's King. It's almost as bad. 
I'm not convinced this is a legitimate Marvel character. This sounds like a Saban character. Yeah. So the Shadow King shows up, and of course, be like, he's wrecking havoc. And it's like, oh yeah, because you don't even know what this guy actually looks like. No, he's in it. Well, we do because he we, he's he's a big guy with armor and horns. <laughs> Except for when he met with Xavier that one time, and he was a human, human. while he was taking control of storms bandit kids thing yeah exactly I'm going, hang on hang on hang mm-hmm. on hang on mm-hmm. if storm if if xavier knew aurora when she was a kid and took her from there to go be with the x-men when did she get to be the goddess of africa who because knows she did that in this continuity <laughs> too this shows continuity is all kinds of screwy <laughs> And apparently it gets screwier and screwier. I'm just saying that when X-Men 97 gets written, they're going to have a lot of, of retconning they're going to have to do. Hopefully, hopefully they do a better job writing writing this. Just and, saying. And that's the thing is, we actually do like this show. We do. I actually. think that's what's crazy. It's like, but it's like, this is definitely a 90s show that was not caring. Oh, yeah. Agreed. The, the, the 90s is always a weird place. Definitely weird writing and characters. And, and this is, stories. And this is pre-90s renaissance. Of, yes. of children's entertainment yes when we get in grant spider-man was started by here and that's kind of the start of it mm. and then of course batman the animated series would have oh. been out by this mm-hmm. time yeah but this is that weird holdover from the early 90s yeah. where it's like we are we've got this crazy show that mm-hmm. kids like to watch and we didn't really think this through no they didn't like there's like the point where they 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 um uh, I want to call him Which Mastermind, weird, but it's not even Mastermind. Master Mold is in the next Yeah, one. Master Mold, but whatever. But, even though uh, the Sentinels were in this, but they never talked. Oh, my gosh. But, uh, oh, which, yeah, they which, were in it. Which, kudos. I actually like the fact that we saw, uh, when they were showing each of the villain, the, the fears of the other uh, X-Men, mm-hmm. except for Storm, so that's, I'm sorry, her claustrophobia is a joke at this point. <laughs> It seems yeah, like yeah. For but, those who actually do have claustrophobia, yeah, we, we are not we, making fun not, of that. We're not making fun of that. We're making fun of how they sh- continually shove this down our throats in this show. Yeah, it's, that storm is claustrophobic. Like I, for the eighteenth time this yes, point, like, we know, we know. Uh, but uh, we we do get Sabretooth mm-hmm. fighting Wolverine. It's like okay, that's cool. We get a callback with the Sentinels attacking Jubilee. Mm-hmm. Even though that was weird, how they did that with them going through the ground. That was weird. Yeah, was. And I don't remember what Cyclops is, was. Uh, 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 Sinister. Sinister, yeah. He was yeah, Mr. Sinister. Because he had a gene uh, trapped. Mm-hmm. Going back to that episode mm-hmm. in season two. Yeah. on uh, At the end of uh, the long walk across the wildlands. That's right. <laughs> long that walk. Episode. That episode. <laughs> yes. Uh, Gosh. But. Yeah, the, the, but yeah, this this is just a weird episode. It's a weird episode. A Let's weird get episode. into the second episode. All right. Uh, next episode was called Courage. First aired September twenty third, nineteen ninety five. So backwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, written by, as directed by Larry Houston and Fred Miller, as mm-hmm. always, and was written by Michael Edens. In this episode, Morph and Wolverine investigate and discover that the Sentinels are back. Okay, we brought back Morph. Honestly, Yay. that's kind of I, I kind of I don't I I like this reappearance better than the first time he reappeared, but mm-hmm. okay. Barry Flatman uh, repri- uh comes back as Henry Peter Gyrick, mm-hmm. David Fox as the Sentinels and Master Mold, Brett Halsley as Doctor Bolivar Trask, and we got Ron Rubin as Morph. Which I meant to double check this, and I didn't. I don't know if that's the same voice actor who played Morph in the original episode. I don't remember. Because it doesn't sound like him. No, it doesn't. Uh, in this episode, Wolverine, we, look out! <laughs> in this episode, we got cameos by Strong Guy, Omega Red, Sasquatch, Angel, and Longshot. Morph appears all as all throughout the episode. Mm-hmm. In this episode, Master Mold orders the Sentinels to retrieve the one who destroyed his body, being Professor Xavier, mm-hmm. referencing the events of the final decision. And during the final battle, Morph changes into several other characters to make use of their inherited abilities. Omega Red's tendrils, Sasquatch Super Strength, Angel's Wings for Flight, and yeah. Long Shot's Hollow Bones for Agility. Hmm. And I'm sitting here reading this and going, Long Shot's power is that he has hollow bones? I thought it was more he had luck. I thought that's what it was, too. Yeah. 
Again, continuity, people. What's going on? Well, it was uh, the nineties. Warlocks. It's also it was Mojo. Who yeah. knows what's going on it's with Mojo? Mojo World. <laughs> I'm gonna Mojo the heck out of here. Yeah. At, at this point, I'd rather have Mojo. Jojo. <laughs> this is not Powerpuff Girls, though. I know, but that would be somewhat. That would be more fun. Anyway, this is actually a better episode. I actually. Yeah. I actually like Morph in this episode. Yeah. They actually wrote his character pretty good, mm-hmm. I think. But uh, other than that, it was just kind of, you can tell we're on the, the downward slope yeah, of the agreed. show right now. Agreed. Because it's like, oh, we don't know what to we're, do. Mm-hmm. We're just trying to continue. Here's the thing. Once Fred Miller stepped into the director's chair alongside Larry Houston, mm-hmm. who I'm not convinced is directing anymore, I think this legally they have to keep putting his they name keep on credit, the show. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when this show has gone downhill because really after um after the dark phoenix saga which was still where the writing was still like the best this show has been yeah the writing on the the, the season four and season five episodes have just been a thing <laughs> it's like we're still we, we haven't lost ratings yet yeah so we're still making stuff. But you can tell this is why when they went to season five, they made it went to an even cheaper studio to make this. Yeah. Agreed. Like it's so, it's it's a serviceable episode. Yeah. And like this is not the first season. No, or it's the not the second, second season. Or the third season. This is like, okay, we're we know we're all, we have jumped the shark and we have not left the lake yet. Yeah. And to think we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Are you 10. looking at my list or an official list? Because some of those official lists are going to count some of the stuff we've already reviewed. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, hang on. I'm actually two, looking at the four, list six, on eight, Disney Plus. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. I think if I'm counting this right, we've got 26 episodes left. Okay. Not counting our two special episodes. That's right. That we haven't announced yet. True. But one of them is coming up really quick. I just realized. Ah, okay. End of, end of next month. Hmm. So uh, that's really all I've got for this one. It's I got gotcha. a weird episode. Agreed. Again, season four gets weirder. I mean, like it's odd. And season five is just going to be dragging. Oh my, like, dragging the. That season five is going to be hard to watch. That's what I. That's, I. I don't remember season five that well. It's but really it's, sad that season yeah, five is not lining up with bad movie month. Oh, that would be hilarious. But the next season that we're doing does, but that had those two things do not correlate at all. But anyway, I think that's going to bring it, bring us to the end of this one. Next yeah. week, we are reviewing the episodes secrets, not long buried and nightcrawler. Mm-hmm. Yes, Nightcrawler. I know is a good episode. That's such a, I'll be like, I remember it's Nightcrawler. Yeah, because I remember to this day this episode. I remember Nightcrawler because I remember thinking, oh, when when, when X two was getting announced, mm-hmm. that movie went, oh, Nightcrawler's gonna be in this. He's an awesome character. I hope they do him justice. He kind of did him justice, kind of. Anyway, yeah, because I remember I remember the this episode so succinctly because I remember. The episode because they do touch on religion, like actually having a relationship yes. with God. And uh you know I don't, the, I don't think he's a Baptist preacher in this one, like no. he is in the comics. No, he's not. But I think no, I think in the comics he's more like a like a Catholic priest or something. I thought he was I thought he was Baptist. But nuance. Whatever. Yeah, because I remember in this episode clearly it's not important right now. No, it's not important now. But I remember very distinctly when I was a kid watching the very end of this episode where it's Wolverine. On his knees, praying to God about something, but I was like, "Oh, that's different. This is '90s cartoons, and they're dealing with something that is, you know, faith-based, as like a main character praying to God. It's like this mm-hmm. is cool. So yeah, I'm I'm very looking forward to revisiting that episode because I remember that episode very very clearly because there it's Nightcrawler. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was looking real quick because now I am curious. Hmm. <laughs> Which particular Christian faith he belongs to? Oh, uh, I think he's Catholic. I think. I mean, that would make well, sense because he's German. Yeah. But... Well, no, be like Lutheran. Then he could be Lutheran. He could be Lutheran. Yeah. He could be Lutheran. But I can't bring it up. Because most of them be like either he's Catholic, 
he's a, he's a he's Lutheran or um he he's just a, like a generic religious person who believes in God. Well, let's face it, the writers probably wouldn't have been able to write it very well anyway. Yeah. Because honestly, I remember Wolverine's prayer about for forgiveness and the mm -hmm. whole bit. I was like, oh my gosh, that's powerful. And seeing a clip over it, I think like a year, like a few years ago, I was like, whoa, that brings me back to my childhood. And it's like, oh my gosh, that's yeah. good. That's good. That's good stuff. Definitely is an adult now who has a much firmer faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, that's really good. For a 90s cartoon, for the big wolverine character to stop and do that that's just really cool i'm looking forward to that Can't find it fast enough to bring it up before anyway. we end the show right join us next week for those things in the meantime this has been drew this is jacob and we'll catch you in the next frame you can follow jacob on his facebook at jacob b heron his facebook page jacob's daily art corner where he tries to draw each and every day i try his instagram at jacob b heron his Twitter at Jacob Heron, and his letterbox to Jacob Heron. You can find Drew on Facebook at Drew Dodgen. His Facebook page Drew's photo bin to see his photography. His letterbox page at G George 759. His Twitter at G George 759. And Instagram at Drew Dodgen. You can like us on Facebook at the Cellcast Podcast. On Twitch at the Cellcast Gaming. On YouTube at Cellcast on Twitter at cast underscore cell. The Cellcast can be found at Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or anywhere else fine podcasts are downloaded from. Please rate and review us where you found us, and also on Podchaser. Email us at thecellcastpodcast at gmail.com. The Cellcast is a proud member of both the Pop Americana and Culture Box Media Networks. For more information, please see the link in the description. Our theme song is Drop and Roll by Silent Partner. And remember, that's Cell with a single L. Swayze Christmas and we'll gather at the roadhouse with our next of kin and Santa can be our regular Saturday night thing. We'll decorate a bar stool and gather round and sing. Oh, let's have a Patrick Swayze Christmas this year or we'll tear your throat out and kick you in the ear. What the heck? <laughs> you said Patrick Swayze earlier in Roadhouse, oh. and I remembered a song from Mystery Science Theater 3000, specifically the episode Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. <laughs> what the heck? And they had a Patrick Swayze Christmas that year. <laughs> and I couldn't, I'm sitting there going, I, I can't, I have to. There's nothing from Ninja Scroll I can base a joke off of, but you mentioned Patrick Swayze, and it's July. Christmas in July is a thing! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>